Thanks. I'm Miss Britt from Salon Success Academy in Riverside. I am the barbering instructor over there, and today we're going to be going over the state board practical procedures. And if you guys have any questions from here on out, you guys are welcome to email me at Brittany H at SalonSuccessAcademy.com. Um, if you need the spelling on that, we can get that out to you as soon as possible. Um, we're gonna go over kind of what a day at State Board is going to look like for you guys. Um, so starting with your mannequin head requirements, uh, you guys will need a male doll head. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like. All right, a male doll head. We do not want any markings on him. So this one says barber class, that would not be okay. Make sure you don't have your name on it. It needs to be completely new. Uh, you guys can prep it by taking it down to two to three inches long. You do not want to have it in the actual haircut that you will be doing at state board, okay? Um, we do have a female doll that will be provided to you guys by uh, California Supreme Kit. However, I always recommend that you guys take your own uh, female doll just because you can't control the actual haircut and if there's product buildup from prior use. Uh, but if you do take your own, please make sure she is about seven to eight inches long and in the 90 degree uniform cut. That will help you guys when it comes to the chemical weighting or the part procedure. Um, let's talk about your proctors and examiners. Okay, so candidates are not allowed to uh, converse with the proctor or examiner and vice versa. So there are only two things that the proctor is able to tell you if you were to ask any questions about the practical procedures themselves, okay? So they can say, do the best with what you have available or do as you were taught. Um, do as you were taught, they're telling you that because all schools are taught differently. So what we teach you here at Salon Success Academy is going to be different from another barbering school. Um, so you want to go ahead and make sure that you follow what we teach you. Every school is going to teach differently, okay? Um, if you have an emergency situation, you are to raise your hand, let the proctor know if you have to leave the room for any reason. Make sure you take your ID with you. That way you guys can get back into the testing room. Um, but you need permission to leave the room at any time. All right, so there are a few things that will be read to all candidates during the procedures, okay? So um, if everybody has stepped back, and completed the session before the time has elapsed, the proctor will go ahead and say all candidates have indicated they are completed the section of the examination. We will now proceed, or all examiners have indicated they are ready to proceed. So listen for those things. Once they read any of these things that I'm mentioning, you're going to want to stop what you're doing, sanitize and stand back, okay? Um, if the timer goes off before the candidates have stepped back, they are going to say, please stop working. So let's say, for example, you're rolling a perm rod and it's halfway. Go ahead and roll it all the way down and fasten it, okay? Then sanitize and stand back, okay? There's no reason to take the perm rod out and then have to remove the perm papers and make it prolonged, okay? So just go ahead and roll it down, fasten it, sanitize and stand back. So when you guys are walking into the exam room, okay? So I do wanna go over a little bit of changes that have happened since COVID-19, okay? So now there are a little bit um, different rules and uh, regulations that we have to follow when we go to state board. You guys cannot bring anybody with you, okay? And nobody except for you is allowed upstairs on the fourth floor during the exam. So whoever takes you to state board, if you do have somebody that goes with you, you're gonna have to have them wait outside for you, okay? Um, you will have to wear a mask. You will have to practice social distancing at all times. Um, I have been told that there are only four people to a testing room at a time so that you guys are able to social distance inside the room, okay? Um, as you guys wait outside, you will need to make sure that you social distance as well, okay? Um, upon in coming into the room, you guys will need to wait until you are instructed individually to enter and where to set up. The proctor will instruct you which station to go to. Um, <clears throat> the proctor at all times will be maintaining a social distance six feet from you, and you will need to do that from them, okay? Um, when you get into the exam room, you are going to take your admissions letter and ID and place them onto the manicure table. Please make sure that your admissions letter is signed. There is no pen available for you in there, so make sure it's signed before you go in, okay? Uh, your duffel bag, tripod, and doll heads need to go all underneath the station, 
Okay, the proctor doesn't want anything outside. There is plenty of room underneath, and if you are placing anything outside of underneath the station, they are going to let you know to put it underneath, okay? Um, <clears throat> you will be instructed when to set up your tripod and doll head, okay? There will be a binder on your station that instructs you on what to do. So your proctor may or may not verbally tell you. They may come up to you and say, read this first page, and then it will say, set up tripod and doll head, and you will need to do that then, okay? Uh, then you will step back and wait for further instructions. Now, there are a few things as we go along that I will be um, talking about COVID-19 and the changes that happen to the procedures. Um, but just to mention them, we changed the way that we do the sweeping procedure. So I'll go over how to disinfect the handles on the broom and the dustpan. Also, when they instruct you individually, they will be giving you social distance six feet, okay? So you will need to make sure that they can see exactly what you guys are doing. So I hope those um, pieces of advice help you guys. There are much more um, advice and parameters that we need to go by, and that can be found on the barbercosmo.ca.gov and you guys can also email me with any questions. So I hope that helped you guys. So we are going to be going over the work area and client preparation and setup of supplies. This will be your first procedure. So before this procedure, your instructor or proctor will have told you to set up tripod and doll head. Upon doing so, you wanna make sure that the doll head is about part level. That way you're not working in a way that's not ergonomic so that you're not raising your arms too high above your shoulders and that we're making sure that our body is taken care of. They're gonna be looking for those types of things, okay? Um, I have also prepped my male doll head. Like I said before, he's between two to three inches long. And if you do take him at a little bit longer length, just be careful when you do go through the haircut as if you do take a magnetic motor with you, um, it may cause it to make a loud noise by putting too much hair through uh, the teeth. So if you want to, I would highly suggest prepping your doll head before you go to seat board. Um, I do kind of want to touch on um, how to prep them. So don't put a lot of product in there. If you need to put like one pump of serum in there to correct any frizziness that's in there, that's fine, but not a ton of product. Okay. All right, so my tripod is all set up, my doll head is set up, and they are going to read the instructions. So I'm not touching my doll head right now, I'm not doing anything that's pulling anything out of the duffel bag, I'm standing and waiting for instruction. Okay, so the instructions will read, you'll prepare your work area for your client, you will set up the universal supplies you use throughout the examination. You will also set up the supplies for the haircutting section of the examination. You will prepare your client for services. You will be expected to you will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Stand back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. So they will repeat them one more time and then they will say you may begin. If you are a visual learner, there is that binder that we talked about earlier. It is on your station and you can follow along with the instructions. You are also able to check to make sure you hit every single point um, in those instructions when you feel like you've finished the procedure, okay? So I just wanna break this down for you a little bit on the instructions. So you will prepare your work area for your client. So this is a new client. That means we need to disinfect the entire area for our client, okay? Um, you will set up the supplies and use for the remainder of the examination. So this is gonna be all the universal supplies such as your spray water bottle, your sanitizer, your disinfectant spray, all your paper towels, okay, things like that. You will prepare your client for services. This means you will drape your client, okay? So when you hear you will prepare your client for services, that means you need to prep them for what's to come. Um, and in all of the directions, you guys are going to notice, it will say client protection, safety and infection control procedures. This is the most important part of the exam. You can not finish every single procedure, but you maintained client protection, safety and infection control, and you will still pass. So just make sure that you are aware of everything that's going on. We're not cutting past our second knuckle. We're making sure that we protect the face when we're spraying the water bottle. So we just need to be aware of what we're doing, okay? All right, so I'm gonna begin. So I'm gonna open the duffel bag 
and sanitize my hands. And I'm gonna place that hand sanitizer on the working area, okay? I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna take out my disinfectant spray. Okay, I'm gonna stop here um, because I need to set up my trash bag before I actually spray down the disinfectant or spray down my working area. Um, a lot of times during mop board, I find that people go ahead and disinfect first before setting up the bag. So if you don't set up the trash bag before you disinfect, you won't have a area to throw away this plastic bag, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, place that back into the duffel bag, and I'm gonna pull out my trash bag. The bags will need to be underneath the station as well, and the label will need to be facing towards the proctor, that way they are able to read what it is. Okay. I'm also going to set up my soiled linens bag. Yours is going to look a little bit different. So mine is a uh, paper bag. Yours will be an actual fabric bag, okay? And you will be able to put that on the floor. So I'm gonna sanitize my hands again. Our duffel bag is considered a clean storage, okay? So we need to sanitize every single time we go into the duffel bag. So I am now going to take out the disinfectant spray and my paper towel, and I'm gonna throw away the plastic bag. I'm gonna spray down my working area and my manicure table. Because I set out the hand sanitizer, I do need to wipe that down. Okay, because I placed it onto an area that was not disinfected yet. I'm gonna spray or wipe down my disinfectant bottle and the manicure table. I am wiping down the manicure table in case I do need to use that for any point during the hair cutting procedure. I'm gonna throw away my paper towel in the trash bag, sanitize my hands, and now I can bring out all of my universal supplies. So I have a table set up box. Um, yours might look like this, or you might have a plastic bag. Either way, a plastic bag or a container is considered a clean storage, okay? In here, you guys will have multiple items that are extra, such as a towel, you will have a cape, your first aid kit will be in here, paper towels, clips, combs, etc. okay? So you'll see me pull things out as we go. So that's the table set up. I also have your items to be disinfected box. Now yours might be double the size of this um, to allow to fit your items into, okay? I'm also going to be pulling out the steam towel bag. This will have three steam towels in it. One will be for the haircut and two will be for the shape. I'm going to pull out my hair cutting supply bag. I'm going to open that up and place out an SMA towel. I will have one towel for draping, a cape to drape with. I will have a number four guard, which you guys will need to take with you. You will also have a number one guard, which you will need to take with you. A clipper comb. You will have shears. I've also placed in my own pair of shears and I'll go over why in just a moment. You will have nick relief that will go into your universal um, area. You will also have uh, cotton, astringent, which will go into the universal supply area. So notice how I'm keeping my SMA separate from the working supply, okay? So anything that comes into direct contact with my guest is going to go on the SMA, and anything that does not will go on the site, okay? So bottles, plastic bags, um, anything that is a case, so the case for your shears, the case for your razor. I will have clips, just in case I have a long-haired doll head. I will have my razor. 
Please make sure the razor does not have a, a blade inside. You do not have to have a blade inside of the razor when you go to state board. Um, I will tell you that when I went to state board, there was a blade inside and I did cut myself, okay? So I had to perform the blood exposure procedure twice, okay? So I always recommend that you guys take a extra pair of contaminated bags, so two of them, just in case you do actually cut yourself at state board. Now I do recommend that they are gallon size and I'll show you what that looks like. So a gallon size bag, and you guys can see here, it's labeled contaminated, you will need to put two of these into your kit. And the reason I say that is because if you do actually cut yourself and you drop blood onto this white towel, you will need to double bag that. This first aid kit will not hold those towels, they're too big. So that's why I say put these gallon size bags inside, labeled contaminated, okay? Now you will need to pull out your first aid kit. This does remain out the entire test, okay? I'm going to pull out my paper towels, place those out. I will also need spatulas. Now your kit may come with these bottles instead of spatulas to dispense product, okay? So the main thing, if they are a squeeze bottle, make sure that you are not touching the tip of it. If you do, you will need to disinfect it with your hospital grade disinfectant before using it again, okay? So just make sure we don't touch the tip of any squeeze dispense bottle, okay? So I'm going to remove from the case, the razor, and I'm gonna place it on my SMA. And then the case goes back into the work area. Now, this is the reason why I tell you guys to put an extra pair of longer shears. These shears are probably about four and a half um, inches wide, okay? So if I show you guys how far those shears go into the clipper comb, you're gonna see how much surface area you're going to be able to cover when it comes to shear over comb technique, okay? So that's why I tell you to put your six and a half shears in there, okay? Now the last thing that I will need to make sure that is out and plugged in are my clippers, okay? You do not have to take a pair of trimmers to state board, although you can. Uh, you are able to outline with the clippers um, because you will be tapering out the haircut. Um, but if you are more comfortable doing that with the trimmers, you are more than welcome to tape them, okay? But it's not a requirement. Another thing that I need to make sure of is that I make sure my duffel bag is closed after working out of it. The longer that it stays open, the more points are being taken off. If I leave that open the entire test, I'm going to automatically fail because that is considered a clean storage, okay? My spray water bottle. Please make sure that you guys control the cord of the clippers. The clippers are an item that you will also need to make sure that you take with you, okay? They are not included in your kit. And the clippers go on to the SMA. Um, I do have an extension cord. However, your guys' outlet is going to be on the right side of the, uh, of the station on the top. So you won't have to do any bending over or crawling underneath anything. If that is not working, you want to make sure that you plug it in and turn it on to make sure it's working. But if it's not, raise your hand and let the proctor know, okay? All right. After you have finished setting up, okay, and making sure that your SMA looks organized, you're going to drape the client, okay? So I'm going to open up my cape over the SMA. And the reason why is in case I accidentally drop it because I am going to be a little bit stressed that day, it's going to fall onto the station and not onto the floor. If it does fall onto the floor, it's okay. Sanitize your hands, um, pick up the cape, put it into soiled linen, sanitize again, go into your universal supply box or your table setup and grab the extra cape and then you can redrape your client, okay? 
So we are going to hold this towel lengthwise. We're gonna fold it in half. Then we're gonna fold it in half one more time. And this is going to go around the base of the neck. Make sure that you remove any hair that gets caught into the towel. You can also use your clips to control any hair as well. Then I'm going to take the cape and your guys' might be uh, Velcro. When you guys go to skateboard, mine has a tie on it. The main thing that you want to make sure of is that your cape is not touching the skin. So you want the towel exposed. Okay. Then I'm going to sanitize and stand back. And that will conclude the work area setup for our first client. So now we're going to go over the hair cutting procedure. It is 40 minutes. Your instructions will read. You will perform a tapered haircut with no blocked line at the nape. You will demonstrate clipper cutting with and without guard or detachable blade. You will demonstrate the use of shear over comb. You will demonstrate fingers and shear cutting. You will cut at least a half an inch of hair throughout the haircut. You will be expected to complete and blend the haircut. You will also be expected to shave both sides of the neck with a straight razor. Do not remove your hair clippings from your work area until you are instructed individually by the examiner to do so. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 40 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 20 minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. So we'll repeat it one more time, and then they will tell you to begin. So just real quick, you do have to show four different techniques, okay? Clipper cutting with and without guard. You do have to demonstrate <clears throat> uh, the use of shear for comb the use of shear and finger cutting, okay? And then you will be also uh, making sure that you do a tapered haircut, all right? So we need to make sure that we do all of those things to satisfy the directions. Okay, so after they say you may begin, we're going to sanitize our hands and we are going to perform a scalp analysis. Okay, so a scalp analysis is going to be done on each new guest that we're working on when it comes to the hair. Okay, so I'm going to head, going ahead and parting down the center and I'm going to take half an inch vertical partings starting at the front hairline on the right side and then I'm going to pull apart as I move through the head. I'm checking for CADS, okay? CADS are cuts, abrasions, diseases, disorders. This should take you no more than about 30 seconds to do. What we're doing is showing the proctor that we know we need to check for these things because we cannot work on clients if there are any cats present. Once that is finished, I can go ahead and place my comb back on the SMA. I will need to make sure that it's free of all debris and hair. Okay. I'm going to sanitize my hands and then we will begin the haircut, okay? So I'm going to put on my guard, number four guard, onto the clipper. I'm also going to move over my items and I'm going to be placing a paper towel next to my SMA. And this is going to act as another SMA for my clippers, okay? Um, I don't have time during this procedure to stop and make sure I wipe off the clippers at any time. So I can go ahead and use this paper towel as its own SMA and not have to wipe off any hair. So as long as no hair transfer gets onto my clean SMA, we're okay, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the clipper and we're gonna start it at the right sideburn and we're gonna go up to underneath the parietal ridge. I'm using a comb to control the hair. So notice how this magnetic clipper is having a really hard time moving through the hair. So this is what it's gonna look like if you guys take a longer hair doll head with you to state board, okay? So you're just gonna wanna move the clippers a little bit more slowly than you normally would. Especially if your doll head is a little bit more dense. Okay. 
Anytime I need to move the doll head, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the clipper off, move the doll head, and then I can turn it back on. Please remember that once you place the tripod in its place, you cannot move it. So imagine it's like a barber chair. The barber chairs are extremely heavy. You wouldn't move it with a client sitting in it. So this is our client. We can't be moving the tripod at all. There will be one more opportunity to move the tripod during the sweeping procedure. And that will be the only time that you'll be able to move it. After that, it needs to stay in its place. Now, does that mean that you can't trip over it and then move it back? No, you can go ahead and do that. So if you do trip over your tripod at any time, you can go ahead and move it back. Um, let's say that the doll head flew off across the room and the tripod fell over. You guys can fix that too. So it's not a big deal if that happens because like I said, barbering chairs are heavy, so that normally wouldn't happen. Um, but we cannot continue to move the tripod like this, okay? So I'm gonna continue across the back. So you're gonna notice that I am um, creating more of a drop fade. Um, this is just so that I create that buildup of weight in the crown area. Um, it really doesn't matter what type of haircut that you guys do, as long as it's tapered at the nape and you guys satisfy all four techniques, okay? Um, so if you end up doing a different haircut than what I have here, no big deal. Just make sure you guys go by the directions, okay? So I'm gonna continue with my number four. I'm gonna go ahead and tilt Brad forward here. So I'm gonna continue on to the left side, continuing that drop phase so it will rise on the left side. I'm gonna turn the tripod just so you guys can see, but please make sure that you don't move it at C4 just like I just stated. too much um, because you're going to create no blocks line at the nape so meaning a zero taper if that's not extremely clean at this moment it's not a big deal remember that when we're creating a haircut we create the basic shape first and then we go back and refine it the top part of the hair. Um, that's not really necessary as in the directions it states that you need to complete a blended haircut. So I, as you've seen, I'm controlling even the top hair with my clipper comb so that I get that in the clipper and that'll make it a lot easier for me later to go ahead and blend the side to the top. So I'm going to remove my foreguard. I'm gonna place it on my SMA next to the clean SMA, okay? Now I'm gonna create the no-blocked line at the nape. 
okay? I'm gonna slightly move my towel down. If your towel or drape does fall and it lands on the tripod, you do not have to replace it with a new one. Okay, so if that happens, go ahead and just lift it back up and redrape the guest. Anytime something happens, you need to address it right away. Okay, so we can't leave it undraped. You will cause yourself to lose points if you do that, okay? Um, if for some reason the doll head flies off across the room and the drape is still intact, you guys can go ahead and just pick it up and put it back on the tripod. If it became loose for some reason and it fell on the floor, then that is when you would need to replace it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my zero. So the lever is all the way up, okay? Lever is all the way up, and I'm going to create that zero block. Then I'm gonna go ahead and utilize my half, bring that up another quarter inch. Now, when I do clip over comb, I like to blend with my half. Uh, so it's up to you what you wanna do, but blending with your half gives you more of a zigzag pattern or more of a blended technique. If you blend with your zero, it gives you more of a uniform look. Okay, so it depends on what you're comfortable with. I like to use the half, okay? So from that point, I'm gonna go ahead and start utilizing my clip over comb technique. This is where we're using a buildup of weight. Now with the doll heads, they're a little strange, okay? So you're noticing that I'm gonna go in upside down and that's just because the scalp itself is not human, okay? Um, so you're gonna have to go all different types of ways to make sure that we blend that out. You're gonna notice that I go in vertically. Now going in vertically does give you more of a blend as well. I am also going to be utilizing a freehand technique. So I'm gonna go in with my half and freehand my taper a bit. If you're not comfortable doing it this way, you can definitely put on the one guard and blend up before you start your clipper over comb. You always want to step to the side to make sure that you have your blend. Um, corrected, okay? So if you step to the side, you can see more of the silhouette, and that way if you have any hills and valleys in your haircut, you can go ahead and correct them by stepping back and fixing those. But if you don't step to the side to see the silhouette, you'll never know if you have any um, inconsistencies in your haircut. So you'll notice that there's a buildup of weight, which is more of your graduation technique or creating volume in the hair. I'm going in and freehanding. Again, stepping back to make sure that my silhouette looks correct. And now I'm going in vertically to cross check my work. So it's very important that you guys cross check before you move on.
Okay, so I'm gonna place my clippers down on my SMA that's on the side of my clean one. And I'm gonna move to the front. Now you guys have options, okay? So one option is to place the number one guard on your tool and go ahead and do the side burns with your one guard. Or you guys can do it with your half. It's up to you. Um, the main thing is that they require that you leave the sideburns so that they're able to see that the person still has the sideburn left, okay? And um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what that's gonna look like with the one guard. So that first half an inch in the sideburn will be my one. I'm gonna go ahead and push the lever all the way down to my one and a half and blend up another half an inch. I have a few hairs that are out of place down here, which I'm gonna freehand with my half. And then I will blend clipper over comb. So I've now shown two techniques. I've shown clipper over comb without guard, and I've shown clipper cutting with guard. You also need to make sure that the sides in the front blend with the sides at the back. I'm utilizing a diagonal back motion with my clipper comb. I'm also making sure that I taper out the hairline. You're gonna notice that my clippers are tilting and that is to maintain length above the hairline. You guys will have a mirror in front of you at state board to make sure that your guys' balance with the haircut is on point. So make sure that you utilize the mirror so you can also check your silhouette and the balance of the haircut. Me, I'm here hoping that it turns out for the best. That's a joke. I'm gonna move on to the other side. And I want to show you guys what it's gonna look like with the half. So you guys will be able to choose if you wanna use the half or you wanna use the one. So I am standing off to the side just so you guys can see what I'm demoing, but make sure that you're working in front of your section. You wanna make sure that when you're doing clipper comb on your non-dominant side, that you are going away from the face. Client protection. that we blend front to the back. Utilizing free hands. Make 
checking my silhouette. I also need to check the balance with the opposite side. So I can already see, I'll show you guys, turn it to the front here, that my silhouette looks a little bit different on the right than it does on the left. So here I have a more buildup of weight and here I have more of a 90 degree, okay? So I wanna go ahead and make sure that this matches the right. I need to change anything. Before I spray down the hair, I'm going to show my clipper over comb technique. Now it's easier to do clipper over comb when the hair is in the dry position, okay? And this is also another reason why I tell you guys that you need to style the doll head prior to going to skateboard because when this, the doll head is not styled and it looks like you just woke up with bed head, it's gonna be harder for you guys to make sure that the clipper, or I'm sorry, the sheer over comb technique comes out blended and perfect. So you guys wanna make sure that it is styled and you guys do a nice blow dry on it so that hair is controlled and it's in the form that you guys want it when you go do your sheer over comb. Now I'm going to pick up um, the larger pair of shears, okay? I wanna utilize the smaller shears on top when I'm doing shear over, or shear over finger, okay? And the reason why I wanna use the smaller ones is so I prevent myself from cutting over my second knuckle. Okay, so that's another tip for you guys when it comes to making sure you guys protect yourselves. Now, um, I kinda of wanna go over how to hold the shears when you guys are doing shear over comb. Um, hopefully in this stage, you all know this, but sometimes we don't, and that's okay. So I'm gonna show you one moment. Anytime you guys touch your clothing for any type of reason, um, maybe you have glasses, something like that, and you adjust them, you wanna make sure that you sanitize your hands. Once you touch your own person, um, it is considered unsanitary for you to continue the service. So you'll need to sanitize your hands first, and that's why I just stopped to do that, okay? So I'm gonna pick up my tools again. Now, your shears. If you place your ring finger inside the ring hole and you go ahead and place your pinky on the tank, you're gonna flip your hand over, okay? So your wrist will be up towards the ceiling. Go ahead and extend the blades back towards your thumb just slightly, then flip it back over. So what you guys want to see is that the edge of your thumb is fit right into um, the thumb hole, okay? And that way you guys are just moving that moving blade and the steel blade is still. Uh, that will help you guys keep your wrist completely straight as well, which goes towards ergonomics, okay? All right, so I'm gonna stand back slightly and I wanna work from where my four guard stopped. That's gonna be my guideline moving forward. Again, don't move the tripod at skateboard. I just wanna show you guys a little bit more um, close up. How to utilize shear over comb. So the screw should not go past the spine. If it does, then you're not getting a true um, closeness to your comb, which could cause you not to blend properly. So make sure that screw doesn't go past that outer spine of the comb. So make sure that this panel a vertical panel is perfect before you move on to the next. If you don't, then your guide is going to be lost. So you wanna make sure that we get this completely blended before I move on to my second vertical panel. 
Notice how I'm changing my cone position to diagonal back, okay? So I'm going from a horizontal cone position to diagonal back. Um, my floating position, meaning it's away from the head shape. Anytime it's on the head shape, that means it's anchored. So I'm not anchoring, I'm floating away to maintain that weight in a diagonal back position. Now I'm going to be doing this technique all the way around the parietal ridge. forward. Now, let me talk about palming correctly, okay? So anytime you guys are going to palm the shears, you're going to release your thumb from the thumb hole and you're going to make a fist. What you need to do is make sure that your pinky stays on the tang so that you don't lose control of the blades, okay? So anytime that pinky comes off the tang, that's when it's going to lose control and they will dock you points for not palming correctly. So make sure that you keep that pinky on the tang when you have your shears palm. So the key to your shear over comb is to keep moving, okay? Um, I got better at this. Please don't do this, but <laughs> driving in the car, you know, when I'm stopped on the freeway, I would practice this technique, okay? It didn't come natural. Our hands aren't meant to move like this, okay? So it comes with the practice and overuse of doing this motion, okay? So that your steel blade stays still. Um, you can also put it on your knee, making sure that your wrist stays still. It's up to you how you guys want to practice, but practice makes better. Always remember that. On the right side so before I move on I'm gonna correct it because like I stated prior if your guideline is longer or shorter in any type of way that's going to affect the haircut moving forward so you want to make sure each panel is cut correctly before moving on to correct anything um, out of place from my clipper over comb. So utilizing the shear over comb technique is just like having a manual clipper. Okay, if done in a fluid motion, you should be able to blend out um, pretty well. Now the only difference between the two is your shear over comb technique is gonna be more of a blended technique used on finer types of hair. Um, your clipper over comb is meant for more structure, more uniformity, so on more coarser types.
Now again, I was just cross-checking for balance. All right, so once I'm finished with my sheer over comb, I'm gonna wipe down the blades and place that back on my SMA. The reason I didn't put it on the side SMA is because there's not enough room and it's easily able to be wiped down and placed down, okay? So I'm going to check for any hair or debris, place that back onto my SMA and pick up an all-purpose comb, okay? Making sure that I protect the client's face as I'm spraying the hair down, okay? And notice I'm combing through each time that I spray. The reason you wanna do that is so that you don't overly do it and get too much water everywhere. If you do create a little um, droplet or puddle on the floor, you will need to stop what you're doing. Wipe it up with a paper towel, place that paper towel in the trash, sanitize your hands, and then continue, okay? Making sure that you place your implements down before you do that step. Okay, so spraying down the hair. I'm gonna take my shorter pair of shears, standing behind the guest. I'm going to be taking vertical sections, okay? So starting at the front hairline, I'm gonna take a one inch vertical subsection and I'm going to be combing that straight up. I have to make sure that I cut at least a half an inch. So I'm gonna cut one and a half just to make sure. Now I'm gonna use what's called a traveling guide. So each time I go back after my inch, initially creating that guide, I'm gonna take a half an inch subsection and I'm going to comb that first one back to the second one. Now, as I extend this long hair back, you should be able to see my guideline underneath, okay? And I'm going to match my guideline. Now you will notice that you don't want to cut past your second knuckle. I keep doing it, um, honestly, because I've been here in this industry for 11 years and we get bad habits, but please make sure that you do not cut past your second knuckle, okay? Um, what helps me, especially when I'm demoing for you guys as students, is counting how many times I cut. So I'm gonna do two to three little snips. So I'm combing my second, section back to my third. Okay, I'm gonna do two snips and I'm gonna stop. And I'm gonna move my fingers over. Do two snips and then stop and then continue that way. So if you have more of a rhythm, it will help you not cut past that second knuckle, okay? So I'm gonna split that in half. My third section is going back to my fourth section. I'm gonna move that long hair out of my way so I can see my guideline. Cut twice, stop, move my fingers over. Cut twice, stop, move my fingers over. Cut twice, okay? Double checking the opposite side. Split that in half. My fourth section goes back to the fifth. So each subsection, including your guideline, should be one inch wide. Okay, so I'm gonna comb this straight up, extend the long hair back, cut twice to the second knuckle, not past it. Recomb. Okay, now my fifth goes back to the sixth. Cut twice, reposition. Cut twice, reposition. Okay, now I'm getting back to the crown area. Okay, and I know that I'm going to have to work around the parietal ridge to blend anything that's too long. So I'm not gonna keep working down into the low crown. 
I'm gonna stop here in the mid crown. I'm gonna cross check my work and the way that we do that, sorry Brad, didn't mean to touch your face like that. We're going to take the opposite of what we did. So I took a vertical subsection moving back. So now I'm gonna take a horizontal subsection just to make sure that all the hair is cut um, and there's no hills and valleys, so everything's consistent. If you do see hills and valleys, okay, or any long hairs, um, you can cut in the cross check, but if it's a significant difference, you guys will need to make sure that you do not cut in the cross check. You want to go back and see where it went wrong. Okay, so now I'm gonna comb all of the hair back and to the right. Because I'm right-handed, um, it just works out better for me in the system that I cut that I'm going to start on the right and then work my way to the left. If you guys are left-handed, you might want to start on the left side and work your way to the right. So I'm working behind my guest and I'm going to be holding the subsection overhand. Okay, so I'm gonna be holding it vertically. One inch horizontal or one inch vertical subsection. Okay, using what I cut from the uh, shear over comb technique as a guide. And I'm gonna be moving my way up, making sure I don't cut past that second knuckle. I'm gonna cut anything that's longer than my guideline. Now I'm holding my fingers at about an 80 degree angle. So it's not truly a 90. And the reason for that is because I built weight when I was doing clipper over comb. So I wanna maintain that same buildup of weight. So whatever elevation you guys choose, make sure you maintain that. So I'm gonna continue working in vertical sections all the way around the head. Now remember we did more of a drop fade in the back, okay? So your guys' finger position is going to drop slightly. So I'm not gonna continue working in the high crown. I need to drop to the low crown. So by the time I'm finished with my haircut, I'm gonna be ending up in front of my guest on the opposite, so on my non-dominant side. touching up a few sections. Okay. So Brad's looking good enough to me. So I'm gonna comb the hair all the way back. I'm gonna wipe off the blades of the shears and place those back onto the SMA. 
I'm gonna wipe down the comb, place that back on the SMA, my paper towel. I'm just gonna dust off the rest of this hair and place it into the trash, okay? Now it comes to the next shape. So I'm gonna point and grab down, okay, so that I can see. Let me turn my tripod around. Please don't do this on skateboard. And you're gonna notice that the towel is low on the neck, okay? So I do have to show backhand on my non-dominant side. Uh, reverse backhand, excuse me. You do have to show reverse backhand on your non-dominant side and then you can show free hand on every other section of the neck, okay? So I'm gonna sanitize my hands and I'm going to grab a spatula from my working area. Make sure if you are working with spatulas and they're in a plastic bag that you do seal them back up. I do have a pop top for my shaving gel so I'm gonna open that over the trash and I'm going to dispense shaving gel onto the back of my hand. The shaving gel is gonna go back on the work area and my spatula is gonna go in the trash, okay? Using the pads of my fingers in a rotary motion, so circular motions, I'm going to apply the shave gel to the neck and sides of the neck. Okay, the excess can be wiped off with a paper towel. Okay, place that paper towel in the trash. I'm gonna open up the razor. Now, the handle needs to go extended past the tang. Okay, there's two ways that you guys can hold the razor, okay? You can have your index and middle finger in front of the handle, or you can have your index, middle, and ring finger in front of the handle, whatever's comfortable for you. Um, I normally work with the index and middle finger in front, just so I can get a little bit better uh, motion out of it, okay? But also, I wanna remind you guys that once the blade is open, you cannot take a step. If you do step while the blade is open, you are going to lose points because of its client protection and safety, okay? So anytime the blade is open, you must stay where you're at, okay? If you wanna take a step, you can close it and then move, okay? <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands because I do need a wipe towel. I'm gonna go into my table setup box and grab my extra towel. Just have my foil in it. Okay, so I'm gonna place that on top of my station. It's up to you where you wanna place uh, this towel. You can place it on your station, you can place it on the manicure table, you can go ahead and tuck it into the drape if you'd like. However, I recommend that you don't tuck it into the drape. And the reason why is because each time you have to lift up the towel and wipe the blade. So if the towel were to slip for some reason and it simulates you cutting yourself, you could lose points. So I would just make sure that you utilize the station or the manicure table for your wipe towel. All right, so I'm going to open up the blade. I'm standing very stationary, not moving, okay? You're gonna utilize a reverse backhand. Reverse backhand is when your elbow is tucked into your side. You're gonna work with your dry hand behind the blade. Wipe, close the razor. I'm gonna turn it this way so you guys can see. Open the razor. Show the freehand technique in the nape area. Close the razor. So anytime I need to adjust him or I need to move, I need to close the blade, okay? Open the blade, freehand, wipe, close the razor. I'm gonna place the razor back onto the SMA, sanitize my hands. I'm gonna grab the cotton from this bag. Place the bag in the trash. I'm gonna take a stringent and dispense over the trash. Oh, sorry you guys, I did mess up. Okay, so I'm gonna place that back down. Thankfully, I have extra cotton. Okay, so I'm gonna place that piece of cotton in the trash. So I wanted to show you guys this because what if this happened at state board, okay? Um, the reason I like to show you guys mistakes is because mistakes are going to happen and it will be okay if you guys correct it in the moment. Now the point where you guys 
don't correct it is where you're gonna lose points. So they want to see that you guys are actually going to protect the guests or you're gonna correct yourself, okay? So I sanitize my hands. I'm gonna open the steam towel back. Make sure that you seal the steam towel bag. Okay, it is considered a clean container. I'm going to wring it out over the trash and I'm going to test it on my inner wrist, okay? I do need to apply it to the neck and sides of the neck. I'm gonna make sure that I wipe off all residual product. All right, so notice that my drape did fall, okay? I'm gonna place my towel into the soiled linen bag I'm going to untie my drape and I need to fix that right away. I cannot just let it hang there because I will continue to lose points, okay? You guys have 40 minutes for this section, which is plenty of time. So if things do go awry, you guys will be able to fix it. Um, like I had stated prior, I did cut myself during the haircutting procedure and I had plenty of time to do the blood exposure and finish my whole haircut. So you guys should be okay, all right? I'm gonna sanitize my hands again. Go back in and grab another spatula. No, I'm sorry, we already did the shape part portion. I'm gonna grab a cotton and the astringent over the trash. And I do that over the trash because if anything was to drip, it will drip into the trash and not onto the floor, okay? I'm moving the tripod for demo purposes. Now, when you apply any toner or astringent to the skin, you need to do that in a dabbing motion, okay? Don't wipe. So I'm gonna dab that onto the skin. Okay, place that in the trash. I'm gonna sit Brad up, turn him around. Okay, and I'm going to sanitize, and I'm going to stand back and wait for further instructions. Okay, you guys, so once your haircut is complete and you've sanitized and stand back, your proctor is going to come up to you and ask to check your haircut. So they're gonna say, may you please see a comb to check your haircut. You're going to grab a comb from your SMA, hand it to them, and uh, this is where the parameters of COVID-19 come in. So you will need to make sure you stand back six feet from the proctor while they're checking your haircut, okay? So if you forget for some reason, they will remind you, but please try to remember. Okay, so your proctor is gonna go through and check to make sure that you have a blended haircut and there's no weight line. Okay, once that happens, they're gonna hand the comb back to you. Don't say anything. Grab the comb, place it into your items to be disinfected, sanitize, and they're going to say you may now sweep your work area. Okay, so. Uh, these are also new parameters for COVID-19 uh, moving forward. You will need to disinfect your broom handle and dustpan handle upon grabbing them and upon return. Okay, so I'm going to grab a paper towel from my working area and I'm going to spray that down with my hospital grade disinfectant. I'm gonna place that back onto my working area and I'm gonna go grab the broom. Okay, I'm going to disinfect the handle on the broom and the handle on the dustpan. Okay, this goes into the trash. Now, this is the only time that you can move your tripod, okay? So, I'm gonna make sure that I sweep all the hair off of my tripod and I'm going to move him out of the way. So if you had placed him in an uncomfortable um, spot during the first setup, then you guys can go ahead and make sure that you correct it during this portion, during the sweeping procedure. I'm gonna move any cords out of the way. So once that is finished, 
Now I do suggest that you place the hair into your own trash can. And the reason that I say that is because you're going to need to wipe off the bottom of the broom, okay? So I'm gonna take a paper towel and remove all of the DNA from Brad and then I'll place that in the trash. Now, after that, I'm gonna take another paper towel Spray down a paper towel with the hospital grade disinfectant, and then I'm going to take back the broom and the dustpan to where I found it. So this paper towel was to wipe down the broom and the dustpan when I took it back, okay? So I'm gonna place that in the trash and I'm going to sanitize and stand back and wait for further instructions. So now we're going to be doing the second work area setup for your second client. Um, your instructions will read. You will break down your work area and dispose of supplies used in the previous sections of this examination. You will prepare your work area for a new client. You will set up the universal supplies you will use for the remainder of the examination. You will also set up the supplies for the shaving with straight razor section of the examination. You will prepare your client for the service. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. <clears throat> Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated, so they will go over it once again. Um, during this time, you guys are going to be prepping for a new client, meaning you need to disinfect your entire work area and all of the universal supplies. Okay, so that doesn't just mean the station itself, but also it means any bottles that are left out, like your spray water bottles, sanitizer, disinfectant spray, um, your first aid kit, your items to be disinfected box, your table setup bag or box, okay? Um, also the shape uh, bag will need to be disinfected as well, okay? Um, it will also state that you will be preparing your client for the shape. So that means that you need to undrape and redrape your guest. Okay. All right, so we're going to sanitize after they say you may begin. And I do want to remind you guys, um, if you're a visual learner, you guys have the directions in a binder on your station. So you guys can refer to those at any point after the instructions have been read, okay? And you, you can follow along as well, okay? Um, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands. I'm going to place all the items into the correct receptacles, okay? So I'm gonna open my items to be disinfected box and place all of the items that can be sanitized into here. Anything that's disposable, such so as cotton, um, Q-tips, uh, going into the, the spatulas, those are single use, meaning they go into the trash, okay? My wipe towel is going into soiled linen. I'm going to undrape my guest make sure that I don't forget. These both go into the soil linen bag. I'm gonna sanitize my hands because I accidentally touched the bag. So anytime you touch the trash on accident or you touch your soil linen bag, please make sure you sanitize afterward, okay? I'm going to unplug my clippers. I'm gonna control the cord. very important that you guys try to stay as organized as possible. So controlling the cord is gonna help you guys out with that, okay? I'm gonna place those into my items to be disinfected box. The paper towel SMA is going to go into the trash. Now my shears and razor, I'm going to open up onto the um, SMA, okay? And the reason that I'm doing that is because I'm going to spray them down with hospital wear disinfectant to show the proctor that I know that these items do need to be disinfected before being placed back into their case. So I'm gonna take my hospital grade disinfectant and spray down all three and grab a paper towel from my working area. Please carefully wipe down the shears and the razor. I did have a student once that pressed too hard um, on the paper towel and did cut themselves at state board. So please make sure you gently wipe them down. Okay, 
Paper towel goes into the trash. I'm gonna place the razor back into its case. Put that into items to be disinfected. I'm gonna place the shears into the case and put those into items to be disinfected. Your Nick relief, okay? You'll either leave this out as your universal supplies for the shade or you can throw it away. I'm gonna throw that away. First aid kit remains out. SMA towel goes into the soil linen bag. I'm gonna close my items to be disinfected box. Grab a paper towel and my spray disinfectant and spray down the working area. I'm also gonna spray down the manicure table. Now, all items will be wiped down, okay? So your items to be disinfected box. And you can utilize the same paper towel, okay? You don't need to pick up a new one each time unless it's full of there, okay? Wipe down your steam towel bag, your table setup box. You'll wipe underneath each item. Make sure you wipe down your first aid kit, your spray water bottle, hand sanitizer. I'm leaving out the shave gel, so I need to wipe that down. Astringent as well. Hospital grade disinfectant, spatula bag, and don't wipe down the paper towels, but do wipe underneath them, okay? And then reorganize your working area. And don't forget to wipe down because we sprayed the manicure table. And this paper towel goes in the trash. Now I do need to make sure I sanitize because I'm going to be going into the duffel bag, which is considered a clean container. I'm gonna open up the large compartment and then I'm going to bring out my supplies for the shade. This will be my SMA towel. I will have one white towel and I'll have one towel to drape with. I also will get more shaving gel and astringent, as well as a new razor. If for some reason you are missing a razor, okay, and you only had the one that was left from the hair cutting procedure, you can utilize that one. So if you're missing your razor from the shade, go back into your items to be disinfected box, remove the razor, take it out of the uh, case that it comes in, spray it down with hospital grade disinfectant, and you may use it, okay? So it's showing that you know how to prevent infection from spreading, okay? So I'm gonna open my cape over my SMA, remember, to make sure that if I do have butterfingers for some reason, it doesn't drop onto the floor, okay? Now, same way that we draped before. I'm gonna hold this lengthwise, fold it in half once, fold it in half twice, Wrap this around my guest, very snugly. Now, I do kind of want to expose the neck because remember, area five for the shade is down towards the base of the neck, okay? Do remember you guys are not uh, bullfighters, okay? So don't do this with your, your cape, okay? You really just don't wanna cause any attention to you whatsoever. You wanna be that person that knows what they're doing and they're not causing any attention, making noises. Um, in mop board, I do um, hear a lot of yawning. I see a lot of stretching. So try not to do weird things. Um, I myself have anxiety. So what I did at skateboard is I wiggled my toes in my shoes. So it helped me like move, but they didn't know that I was moving. So if that's you, there's a little piece of advice, okay? I'm gonna sanitize, make sure that my duffel bag is closed. I'm gonna push down any items of trash that are coming up over the bag. So you don't wanna have any trash coming up over the bag. Make sure that you push that down, sanitize your hands, and then stand back. And that will conclude the second setup.
All right, so we're gonna move on to the shaving with straight razor portion of the exam. Uh, this is will be what's called variable timing. And the reason it's called that is because at one point the proctor is going to come up and instruct you individually when to do the shave, okay? So your instructions will read, you will prepare to perform shaving with a straight razor. You will prepare the model space by lathering and steaming. Do not remove the steam towel until instructed to do so by the examiner. You will be expected to follow all plant protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. Do not demonstrate any of the procedures until the verbal instructions are given. You are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. They will repeat this one more time, and then they will say you may begin, okay? So this portion of the straight razor section is going to be five minutes. This part, you literally are just lathering the face and steaming. So you're going to apply lather to all parts of the beard, mustache, and neck, and then you will apply a steam towel to the face, sanitize, and stand back, okay? So it's very simple, and it kind of trips people up a little bit because they think there should be more to the procedure than that. But just remember, do not remove the steam towel until instructed individually to do so. When you are finished, reread the directions just to make sure that you've done the steps correctly, okay? So I'm gonna sanitize. I'm gonna remove a spatula from my working area. Remember that you may have a squeeze bottle and not to make, or not to let the tip of the squeeze bottle touch your skin. Uh, if you do have a squeeze bottle, you'll dispense that into the palm of your hands and then you will work that in rotary motions around the face, okay? So I'm gonna recline the doll head. Now, anytime that I touch, sorry, let me find where the little hole is. Okay, there it is. Um, anytime that you have to go up underneath the doll head and touch the tripod, you must sanitize your hands afterward. It's just like if you touch the barber chair, um, then your hands are contaminated, so you wanna make sure that you sanitize before continuing to work on that guest, okay? I'm gonna lay out my uh, white, white towel so that it's an easy access. Okay, sanitize. I'm gonna go in and get my spatula at this point. Make sure I seal that bag back down. If you're working from a squeeze bottle, once you dispense the product, please make sure that you close the, the top, okay? I'm gonna open the pop top to my shading gel and dispense onto the back of my hand over the trash. The spatula goes in the trash. Using the pads of my fingers, I am going to work from the left sideburn to the right sideburn, including all shape areas on the neck, chin, mustache area. And I'm gonna end at the right sideburn, okay? I'm gonna wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Place that in the trash, sanitize my hands. Open up the steam towel bag. Grab one steam towel and seal it back down. Bring this out over the trash and test it on your inner wrist, okay? Now I have folded mine so they're already prepped, so I folded it in half lengthwise. When you guys do apply it to the face, make sure that the folded side is towards the nose, but is not covering the nose, okay? Then you wanna take your right corner and crisscross it to the left part, okay? So your left side. Then you're gonna take the left side and crisscross it to your right side. Then I'm going to apply a small amount of pressure to the face, okay? Once that is finished, I'm going to sanitize and then I'm going to stand back and wait for further instructions. All right, so in this portion of the straight razor section, it is going to be individually um, directed by the examiner. Okay, so it will not be timed. They will come up to you and let you know when to demonstrate the first five strokes. So your instructions will read, you will perform shaving with a straight razor. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will be instructed individually by the examiner when to remove the steam towel, re-lather, and demonstrate the first five strokes. This is an untimed section. 
Do not demonstrate, or I'm sorry, do not remove the steam towel or demonstrate strokes until instructed individually by the examiner to do so. The instructions will be repeated. They'll repeat it one more time and then they will go up to each candidate individually, okay? Please remember due to COVID-19, they will be practicing uh, six feet, so social distance away from you. So you will need to make sure that they're able to see what you are doing, which means make sure your back is not towards the prompter, okay? All right, so the prompter has come up to me and they said, please remove the steam towel, re-lather and demonstrate the first five strokes. So I'm going to sanitize my hands, step behind my guest, remove all residual product from the face. Okay, that includes the mouth, if there was any up under the nose, on the bottom of the chin. If you did forget any for some reason, place your hand on the forehead and you can utilize the bottom length of the towel to remove any excess, okay? Then you're gonna remove gently, place the steam towel into soiled linen. Sanitize your hands. I'm gonna grab my spatula. And remember, anytime you go into a Ziploc, a container, or your duffel bag, or your steam towel bag, you need to sanitize first. They are considered a clean container. Make sure I seal that back up. Grab my shaving gel, dispense over the trash onto my hand, place the spatula in the trash, and I'm going to re-lather. Again, starting at the left sideburn and working my way over to the right, making sure to include all of the uh, beard, mustache, and neck. Just because we are only doing one through five does not mean that you can skip lathering the whole face. They want to make sure that you know how to lather the entire face. I'm gonna grab a paper towel from the working area, wipe down my hands. So my hand grazed the trash bag, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands before I touch the guest, okay? All right. So making sure that I'm in a stable position before I open the razor. So I slightly want to be in front of Brad a little bit. Now, if I need to lunge forward to wipe, I can do that, but I cannot take a step. So you just want to make sure that you guys lunge, but don't step while the razor is open, okay? So I want to open the razor so that the handle extends past the tang. Again, you can hold it with your index and middle finger in front, or you can hold it with the index, middle, and ring finger in front, whatever is comfortable for you, okay? Now, making sure that your dry hand stays behind the blade, okay? Um, you cannot work with it in front. It needs to be behind, okay? So I'm gonna hold the left sideburn and I'm gonna demonstrate the free hand stroke at the sideburn. And I'm gonna wipe. Okay, I'm gonna move my thumb to section one and I'm going to or simulate pulling the skin taut, and I'm gonna go ahead and show the backhand movement in segment two. I'm gonna move my dry hand to the nostril and show free hand in the mustache area. I'm gonna move my dry hand to just above the chin and extend up and lunge forward slightly and show free hand in segment four. Now I'm going to go ahead and close the razor and step behind the guest. Okay, this is going to be reverse freehand. Anytime you are behind the guest, it will be reverse freehand. I'm going to come with my hand around the face, okay? Grabbing the base of the neck and reverse freehand in section five, okay? Now I can lunge forward and wipe or you guys can close the razor, walk to the white towel, open it, and wipe it, okay? Once I've wiped the razor, I'm gonna place it back onto the SMA. I'm going to sanitize and stand back. From there, the proctor will say, please do nothing until the next verbal instructions. You will not need to demonstrate six through 14. It is only one through five. Okay, and that will conclude the instruction individually by the examiner.
So this will be the third portion of the shaving procedure. Now, once all candidates have been instructed individually, the proctor will state all examiners have indicated they are ready to proceed. Do not demonstrate any additional shaving strokes. You will perform the finishing steps of the service. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. <clears throat> Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. So once they repeat them, they will say you may begin, okay? Now during this time, you will be sanitizing your hands. You are going to remove the steam towel, apply it to the face, remove all of the lather from the face, and then you will go ahead and dab the astringent onto the face, sanitize and stand back. So super simple, finishing steps to the service, okay? So we're gonna sanitize. And I'm gonna sanitize up to the wrist, open my steam towel bag, remove the last steam towel. So my steam towel bag can now go into the trash. I'm gonna wring my steam towel out over the trash, test it on my inner wrist, and like I stated before, I already prepped my towel so it's already folded in half lengthwise. I'm gonna put the folded part right underneath the nose. Take my right hand and fold it over to my left. Take my left hand and fold it over to my right, making sure I leave the nose exposed. Remember, we don't wanna suffocate breath, okay? I'm going to apply a little bit of pressure and then I'm going to remove all of the residual product from the face. Make sure you do remove all residual product from the mouth, underneath the nose, on the base of the neck. Remember, if you don't remove it all, you can go ahead and put your hand right here on the forehead. And that's just to let the client know that you're gonna be coming in to remove any more product, okay? Then you're gonna place your steam towel in the trash. I'm gonna sanitize my hands, okay? Um, I don't have another piece of cotton out. So what I do have is extra cotton in my duffel bag, okay? So if for some reason you feel like you're gonna need extra supplies, you are able to put any extra supplies you need in the duffel bag. Um, when you guys go to the State Board Rental Company at 6 a.m., um, you can put in place anything in there. You'll just need to give it to them and they will place it inside the kit for you, okay? So I sanitize my hands. I'm gonna go into my duffel bag and remove a piece of cotton. Make sure I close that back up, okay? So I do have my piece of cotton and the astringent and I'm going to dispense over the trash. Place my astringent back onto the working area and remember I'm going to dab the astringent onto the skin, making sure that I get the entire beard area, mustache area, and the base of the neck. And I'm going to be doing all the way from the left to the right side burn. Okay. Remove all residual cotton from the face. I'm gonna sit Brad back up. Sanitize and stand back. And that will conclude the third portion of the shaving procedure. We will be going over the blood exposure procedure. The blood exposure procedure should be performed on the manicure table as your station does face towards the mirror and your back would be to the proctor. So we wanna make sure that the proctor has a good view of how you will be performing the blood exposure procedure. So go ahead and do that procedure off to the side at the manicure table. Um, I have cleared off the station so that you guys are able to see me. Um, so imagine that this is my manicure table. Uh, the exposure procedure is 10 minutes and the instructions will go like this. So you will demonstrate the blood exposure procedure. You'll imagine the following scenario. During a service, you have sustained a minor cut to the index finger. The injury is such that you can continue with the service. Your work area or client has not been contaminated. You are expected to demonstrate the proper procedure for blood exposure. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. <clears throat> Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. They will repeat this one more time as we've stated previously. Um, remember that you will have that binder on the side of your station. So if you do need to visually follow along with the proctor as they're reading the instructions, you may do so. You are also able to review those instructions once you feel like you are finished with the procedure. 
All right, so I'm going to take my hand sanitizer and my first aid kit over to the uh, manicure table once they have said you may begin. I'm going to sanitize, okay? Holding the injured finger elevated. Do remember if you are right-handed, you will have cut the, your left index finger. If you are left-handed, you will have cut the right index finger, okay? If you guys do end up cutting yourself during the haircut and or the shave, you will be expected to perform the blood exposure twice. So please make sure, like I stated in the past, to put extra contaminated bags in your kit, okay? So I am holding the injured finger elevated, sanitizing my hands, okay? So either you will grab a paper towel to cover the blood, which you will need to do if you actually did cut yourself. That way the blood doesn't run down and onto your first aid kit or your working area. Okay, or you will hold the injured finger elevated while you open up your first aid kit. You will need to remove both contaminated bags as you will need to double bag your items. You will need to remove one glove at this time and you will need to move the first aid kit off to the side. You're going to open the first contaminated bag and you're going to fold it down to create a small trash can. You will prop that open so that it is completely open and you are able to put the trash in easily. From there, I'm going to ahead and remove the towel, place it inside my contaminated bag and I'm going to put on the glove, okay? From there, I will sanitize with the glove on I no longer need to hold the injured finger elevated as it is covered by the glove, okay? Once my fingers and my hands are sanitized, I can go ahead and go back into the first aid kit. I'm going to pull out my alcohol wipe and one Band-Aid. I will leave the other glove inside so it stays clean. I'm going to remove the alcohol wipe and place the contents of it in the trash. I will also remove the glove from my injured hand and place it into the contaminated bag, okay? Once I have done that, I will clean the entire finger with the alcohol wipe, okay? So imagine that if you really did cut yourself, there would be blood running down. That is why we need to sanitize or um, use an alcohol wipe on the entire finger, okay? As stated before, I did cut myself at State Board, which caused me to have to do this twice. Um, I actually did have to struggle and use very, very tiny bags um, during the second blood exposure, which would have been the actual procedure. So I don't want you guys to have to struggle like I did. So please make sure that you take those extra contaminated bags, okay? Now, once I have used the alcohol wipe, I'm going to open up the Band-Aid and place the tabs and the paper in the trash. And apply it to the injured finger, okay? Gonna sanitize my hands because I'm gonna go back into my first aid kit. So remember the first aid kit is a clean storage. So you must sanitize before going into it. I'm going to remove the second glove and apply it over the injured hand. I'm going to roll up the contaminated bag that I used in the little trash can. And I'm going to seal it. I'm going to open the second contaminated bag and place the first one inside. And I will seal that one and place it into the trash. I will sanitize and stand back. Now please remember that your first aid kit may not be worked over, okay? If you can imagine, if you really did cut yourself, that the blood would be running and possibly drip onto your first aid kit. The first aid kit needs to stay out the entire test, so we cannot let it get contaminated with blood, okay? Um, also remember that once you are finished with the procedure, you may signal 
The proctor may or may not let you know to take the glove off. Just know that before you begin to set up for the chemical procedures, you may remove the glove and the band-aid and place it into the trash. Um, if you have cut yourself, the glove and the band-aid stay on the entire test, okay? Um, and that will conclude the blood exposure procedure. So now we're going to move on to the third area setup. Okay, this is for the rest of the uh, services, which would be your chemicals through the thermal curling procedure. Uh, so this will not be your plant anymore. Okay, so during this um, service or this setup, we are going to be replacing uh, Brad with Susan. So Susan will now um, come up once the instructions are read and we will switch out and use her for the rest of the remaining services. So your work um, area set up for your third client, the instructions will go like this. You will break down your work area and dispose of supplies used in the previous sections of the examination. You will set up the supplies for the following sections of the examination. Chemical weighting, predisposition and strand test, chemical relaxer, virgin application, hair color retouch application. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. Once they are repeated one more time, they say you may begin. I'm going to sanitize my hands and start to clean up from the previous procedures. Okay, so my white towel is gonna to go into soiled linen. My first aid kit will stay out. The astringent and shaving gel will go into my items to be disinfected box. And remember that we must disinfect the razor before we place it into items to be disinfected. So I'm gonna open that up onto the SMA and spray it down with the hospital grade disinfectant. Please make sure that your universal supplies stay off of the SMA. Okay, so throughout the procedures, your water bottle may not go on the SMA. Your hand sanitizer may not go on the SMA. So remember that anything that comes into direct contact with your guest or the doll head, it goes on top of your SMA towel. Anything else must be on the side and in the working area. So once I've cleaned the razor, I'm gonna place my paper towel in the trash and put the razor back into its case. Now it can go into items to be disinfected. My SMA towel is going to go into soil linen. I'm going to undrape the guest. And that is also going to, into soil linen, the cape and the towel. I had to push down the cape and the towel, so I need to sanitize my hands. I'm going to remove Brad from the tripod and he can go underneath the station behind your duffel bag. And then you will replace him with Susan, okay? I'm going to sanitize one more time and disinfect the work area before I open the duffel bag and set up for chem chemical services. So I'm gonna take one paper towel and I'm going to spray down my working area. Wipe down the working area and all items on top. So everything that's left out that would be your universal supplies must be wiped down as well. So I wipe down the first aid kit. I'm wiping down the items to be disinfected box. And yes, you can utilize the same paper towel. I'm going to wipe down my table setup box. If you do have a table setup bag, you will need to wipe that down as well. I'm going to wipe down underneath, then reorganize. Now, if there is extra hair, which there is on my paper towel, then I'm going to go ahead and grab a new towel. So that is the only time you will need to replace your towel. I'm gonna spray down that paper towel with the hospital grade disinfectant, and then I will wipe down that bottle. So wiping down the disinfectant spray, your spray water bottle, your hand sanitizer, the spatulas, and underneath the paper towels, you do not need to wipe the paper towels down. And then reorganize. Remember that keeping your station organized and clean will show the proctor that you know exactly how to keep your station clean 
and organized. It will show them that you know that you're supposed to uh, prevent the spread of disease and infection, okay? Paper towel goes into the trash. I'm going to sanitize because I'm going into my duffel bag, which is considered a clean container. While I'm working out of the duffel bag, it's okay to leave that open, okay? Um, after working out of it, you will need to make sure it is completely closed. The longer that it stays open, the more points are lost, okay? So I have my chemical waiting bag. I'm gonna take out the towels. One will be your SMA towel. Two will be for your double drape. Remember that we are doing chemical services, so you will need to double drape the client. You will have your simulated waiting bottle. Mine has a piece of plastic on it. Um, that is to make sure that the water does not spill out while in the simulated um, setup bag. Uh, I do not know how the kit company um, prepares their simulated waiting solution, but I'm sure that it will be fine because you're picking it up the day of the test. So if you're wondering why I have that plastic um, barrier, that is why. I have a cake for my chemical services. I have end wraps or end papers. I have cotton. I have perm rods. A rat tail comb and all purpose comb. I'll have clips and protective cream. Protective cream will go in the working area. I'm going to place my setup bag in the trash, sanitize because I'm going back into my kit. Now I'm going to take out my relaxer bag. And you'll notice that I have not organized my SMA yet. The reason being is you want to get all items out first before you organize. That way you know exactly um, what you have and where you want it to be placed. I have simulated relaxer solution. Please remember that that does not go on top of the SMA. It will go in the working area. Ziploc bag goes in the trash. I'm going to sanitize one more time and get out my virgin relaxer. I'm sorry, my um, tint retouch bag. So I went ahead and closed the kit um, before um, I set up. So I have my tin pole that also goes into the working area. I have a piece of cotton that is for the PD and strand test. I will have combs, tint brushes, rat tail combs, and then I'll place my Ziploc in the bag or in the trash bag. Because I touched the trash bag, I'm gonna go ahead and sanitize my hands. And I'm going to go ahead and drape the client, okay? So that'll get most of the uh, bulk off of your SMA by draping the client first before you organize, okay? And again, I'm gonna open up the cape over the station. And remember that's just in case I drop it, it will fall on the station and not on the floor. Okay, I'm gonna clip up Susan's hair first so it doesn't get caught into the towel. And remember that you can turn her to the side. And I'm actually gonna turn her around so you can see how I'm going to double drape her. So the first towel you're gonna hold lengthwise and you're going to place it over her head, okay? So it will look like this from the front and like this in the back, okay? After that, you're gonna hold your other towel and just like we did during the haircut draping and for the shaved drape, you're gonna fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Then you're going to want to move your hands to the center, okay? After that, that way you can control the towel and drape it around her neck. And I'll show you what that looks like in the front view. Okay, so that's the front view. You'll need to make sure that that towel is snug up against the chin so that the cape does not touch any part of the skin. Once 
once you're finished, that towel that you put on the head first will come up and down over what would be her shoulders. Okay, so it will look like this. You'll remove the clip from the hair and then you can set up your SMA, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with putting the, um, my detangling brush on one side and I'm going to group together like items. So I'm gonna group together my rat tail combs. I'm gonna take my wide tooth comb, place it next to my detangling brush. I'm gonna take my all purpose combs, place those next to the rat tail combs. All of my tint brushes can go next to my all purpose combs. Then I'm gonna place my clips across the top. I have cotton, which I'm gonna place at the top as well. I do like to bundle my perm rods. Um, yours hopefully are already unfastened, but please make sure that they are when you get to the um, renting facility. So it's a California Supreme Kit company. Make sure that they have already unfastened all of your perm rods for you so you don't have to struggle taking them all apart, okay? Now I have extra white perm rods. I'm not going to unbundle yet, okay? So I'm just going to double check that I have all of the items for chemicals set up, and then I'm going to sanitize and stand back and wait for further instructions. So now we're gonna go over the chemical weighting procedure, which will be the perm, okay? You have 20 minutes for this section, and the instructions will go like this. You will perform chemical weighting. You will prepare your client for the service. You will wrap the entire center back section from crown to nape. Once you are finished wrapping, please step back and do nothing until the next verbal instructions are given. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 20 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have 10 minutes remaining. <clears throat> do not perform the saturation procedure, a test curl, or remove a rod from the head until instructed individually by the examiner to do so. Please do not remove the remaining rods until you're instructed to do so. And step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated and then they will let you begin. Now this is very important. Um, a lot of times during mock board, what will happen is um, you guys get confused and think that you have to do the saturation um, during this portion of the exam. You need to wait until you're instructed individually by the examiner. So they will come up to you individually as a candidate and instruct you to perform saturation, okay? So the only thing that you are doing during this session is a scalp analysis, because we're gonna be working on a first time client, okay? So we'll need a scalp analysis, we're gonna section and wrap, and that's it. So once you guys are finished doing those things, you will sanitize and stand back and wait for further instructions. So I'm gonna sanitize. I'm gonna grab an all-purpose comb from the SMA. And just like before, for the haircut, I'm gonna take vertical half an inch subsections. I'm going to part and pull apart. So I'm checking for CADS. Um, so cuts, abrasions, diseases, disorders, okay? That way the proctor knows that we need to check each new client and even our existing clients for any um, anything on the scalp that we may not be able to work on. So each half an inch subsection, I'm taking vertically. I'm starting at point A and dragging down to point B and pulling the hair apart. Um, if you have trouble sectioning, what helps is if you do not lift the comb off of the scalp. So if anyone has taken an art class before, you will know that when you draw a straight line, you don't pick up that pencil when you are moving across that paper. So the same thing with the doll head. If we're trying to create a straight line or a straight subsection line, you guys need to start at point A and drag down to point B, and that's when you'll separate the hair. Okay, so let me turn this all head here. So starting at point A, dragging down to point B and separating. Okay, notice how I get a very clean straight line. 
okay? So if you're having problems sectioning, do this a few hundred times, okay? You have plenty of time during your time here at um, Sloan Success Academy. So if you need to practice your subsectioning, that will actually help you speed up your procedures and get you done a lot faster, okay? So I'm gonna section the doll head. <clears throat> But what I'm gonna do is help myself. So I'm gonna spray down and just dampen it a little bit. So the more damp the hair is, the straighter my subsection lines can be. So in order to not get any water on the floor, I'm gonna make sure that I hold the towel up as a little hammock. Okay, so that's gonna catch any drops of water that may want to fall, okay? And notice I am working that water through just like I did with my haircut, okay? That way I'm not using too much water. Let me move the doll head this way so you guys can see. Now do remember that if you are right-handed, it is a better idea for you guys to move the doll head facing towards the left, okay? So that way when I'm working and doing the perm procedure, I can work on the doll head, the proctor's able to see me, and I can reach very easily to my SMA, okay? So ergonomically, better for me, and I'm not struggling as I do the procedure, okay? So, so far, I've already done my scalp analysis. Now I'm dampening down the doll head so I can get cleaner lines with my sections. Now remember it says we're going to section <clears throat> so that we're wrapping from crown to nape. So meaning that the high point of the head is the apex, okay? I don't want to section from the front hairline to the apex and then wrap from there because I'm actually gonna wrap one to two more rods than I actually have to. So make sure when you're sectioning, you go from the front hairline to the crown and then you'll go from the crown to the mastoid process. Um, if you don't know what the mastoid process is, that's okay, I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so I already have my center division line in the doll head, so I'm gonna work back to the crown. And from the crown, I'm gonna work to the mastoid process, which is that bone right behind the ear, okay? So sectioning should look very clean and organized, okay? Sectioning should not take you more than two minutes to do, three minutes max, okay? Now, this would be a subsection that is acceptable. Right now, I'm gonna show you guys a subsection that is not acceptable. So again, on the opposite side, I'm working from the crown to the mastoid process, which is the bone right behind the ear. And remember that when you are creating a subsection line, we're starting at point A to point B without taking that comb off of the scalp. So this would not be okay. Okay, this subsection is not controlled. So there's hair in Susan's eye. Um, it's not controlled. It looks disorganized. So you wanna make sure that we're tucking those ends in and that way they know that we've practiced our craft. We know exactly what we're doing. Nothing looks out of place. Nothing looks disorganized, okay? Remember, if they have nothing to look at as far as you know, disorganization or you not being cleanly, then they're not gonna focus on you. They're gonna be focusing on somebody else who's not doing what they need to do. Okay, so this is what our two sections in the front will look like. So from the center front hairline back to the crown. So the crown is about maybe an inch, inch and a half back from the apex, okay? So we're gonna section back to the crown, from the crown to the mastoid process on both sides. Now when it comes to the back, help yourself out, okay? So you're actually gonna take Susan and you're gonna tilt her forward. Okay, that way I don't have to adjust the tripod in any way. I can actually tilt her forward so I can get a good visual of the nape area. Okay, your section in the mohawk needs to be about two inches wide. And the reason for that is if I take a perm rod 
and I look to the center, so where these little bumps start, okay, my section should be about that wide. I don't want it to get to the outer uh, corners of my perm rod because then I'm gonna start over directing the hair and it won't give me that nice tension that I'm gonna be looking for. I'll actually see a lot of hills and valleys in my uh, subsections and it won't look clean and organized, okay? So a two inch mohawk in the center back. So I'm gonna start on one side, okay? And if we look at the center part line, it's easy to measure one inch, okay? Normally, the um, all-purpose combs that we get in the kit have a measurement on them. So you wanna go one inch to the left and one inch to the right, and that will help you guys determine how wide your subsection should be. Okay, so two inches, starting at point A, dragging down to point B, and separating. Starting at point A, dragging down to point B, and separating. Now, a good way to see that everything is consistent from top to bottom is by twisting your subsection all the way down, okay? So you guys can see I have a good consistency from top to bottom. However, I slightly have a curve in on my left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. by starting point A to point B. Okay, and now I fixed it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and subsection these other two that are outside of the mohawk area away. And I'm gonna make sure that they look exactly like the two in the front. Do remember you cannot move the tripod at state board once it is set in place. I just want to be able to show you guys the demo without being in the way. Okay. So once I have sections, the outer sections away. I'm gonna head and pick up the water bottle, the spray water bottle, and I'm gonna hold up the towel as a hammock and spray down my subsection. So remember that the more damp that your section is, the better control you will get inside those perm papers. Now, if these tend to get in your way, you can actually, for the time being, place them off to the side as such. But just remember to place them back into their controlled subsection um, when or before it comes to the saturation procedure because you will actually need to place protective cream around the hairline and these hairs will actually get in the way, okay? So I don't wanna mess with the hair that's in this comb, so I'm gonna place it into items to be disinfected. I'm gonna sanitize my hands before I go back to work on the guest. Pick up a rat tail comb, okay? And I want to make sure that my subsection is as wide as the diameter of the perm rod, okay? And what I mean by that is if I look at how wide this perm rod is, it's about half an inch. Okay, so if I place the perm rod right on top of my subsection, okay, right where I did at the crown, at that section line, I know that I need to subsection about a half an inch down from that, okay? <clears throat> Reason being, if your subsections are too small, you're gonna start to get bunching. So if your perm rods are pushing each other up and out, that means your subsections are too small. If you're getting separation, then that means your subsections are too wide. And when they are the exact diameter of the perm rod, they will lie um, right next to each other perfectly in a line, okay? <clears throat> 
Now, place my uh, rat tail comb back on the SMA. I'm gonna sanitize, because I need to get out my firm papers. Place the bag in the trash. I'm actually gonna take the comb and I'm going to fan out my perm papers. This will make it easier for me to pick up. And that way I'm not picking up multiple perm papers when I don't need to, okay? So my first subsection is going to be half an inch. I am going to use an on-base placement. And what this means is that on base will be combed 45 degrees away from my part line, okay? So I need to make sure that that rod lands right on this section line. So I'm gonna go 45 degrees away from myself. Please make sure that your subsection lines are consistent so they're straight. You can't have any zigzag patterns um, if you do. What's gonna end up happening is the top rod is gonna get stuck to the next one, and then the next one, and the next one after that. So that when you go to do a test curl or you go to remove one of the rods, they're gonna get stuck together and it's gonna be right in front of the proctor. So please make sure that your subsection lines are straight, okay? So I'm gonna go 45 degrees away. Okay, I wanna make sure that I comb the hair from the base all the way through the end, okay? I am going to use a double flat wrap technique. Now, most of us are used to using the bookend technique, and I know that. Um, however, when you use a bookend technique, it bunches the ends of the hair together, and it doesn't evenly distribute the ends. So using a double flat wrap will actually help distribute the ends properly, and it will cause you um, better results, meaning you won't get very many fish hooks as long as you input it in properly. So when I'm wrapping, I want to maintain the same tension and elevation while I'm wrapping that rod. And the reason being is if I change my elevation from 45 degrees away from me, and then I bring it to 90, I'm gonna have hills and valleys on my perm rod, okay? If I maintain that 45 degrees away with high tension when I'm wrapping, I'm gonna have a nice even uh, parting on my perm rod itself, okay? Now the band, make sure it's not twisted, okay? And you want to make sure that the band is not all the way to the root. So sometimes we twist that band so that it's all the way onto the root. So if this was a real client and she had highlights, that would snap her hair off. So what you wanna do is make sure that that band is on the rod, but not the hair traveling to the rod from the root, okay? I'll say that again. So make sure that the band is on top of the rod as close as you can get to the root, but it's not on the hair that travels from the root to the rod, okay? <clears throat> also, there's um, sometimes there's little like holes that are inside the rods, and um, at times we think, oh, they're supposed to be placed into that hole. Um, we can always wrap the rod perfectly each time to make sure that it's in that hole every single time. So just make sure that that band is as close to the root as possible, but not on the hair traveling to the rod, okay? <clears throat> Again, I'm gonna take my next half an inch subsection making sure that I have a very straight line. And my base placement needs to be consistent all throughout. So I'm gonna comb from the base 45 degrees away. I'm going to use a double flat wrap technique. So I'm gonna place one paper behind, controlling it with my ring finger. Place one in front, controlling it with my thumb and index. Grab my spray water bottle, spray down, the end papers, make sure that they are stuck to the hair and I'm going to pull straight up. Make sure the ends are wrapped in first and using the same amount of tension, I'm going to wrap down. Yeah. So 
So 45 degrees past my part line. Placing one end paper behind, controlled by my ring finger. Placing one end paper in front, controlled by my thumb and index. Spraying down those end papers. Sandwiching them together and extending them all the way up past the ends of the hair. I'm gonna take a perm rod and make sure those ends fold in using the same tension and elevation, wrap all the way down. Making sure the band is not twisted. I'm gonna fasten it on the opposite side and make sure it's as close to the base as possible, but not on the hair traveling to the rod. Now I'm gonna spray down my subsection again, just to make sure I maintain that um, consistent dampness on the hair. Take another half an inch subsection. Forty-five degrees past the part line. Now, sometimes, if our doll head is not prepped before we go to state board, and they have different lengths and layers going on. Sometimes we're gonna have shorter hairs that fall out. So we'll need to wrap the long hairs first and as the short hairs <clears throat> come up, we're gonna need to add another end paper. Okay, and I'll show you in the next one, even if I don't have any short hairs coming out, um, you'll need to add another end paper to control those layers. So I'm gonna take another half an inch subsection. Forty-five degrees past my part. So you'll notice too that as I'm working down um, the head shape, and remember the head shape is convex, so it's more rounded. Um, I'm not extending all the way up like I did up in the crown area. So it needs to be forty-five degrees past the part line. So place one end paper behind, one in front. So on this subsection, I'm going to act like I have shorter ends that need to go into the the rod itself, okay? So I'm going to wrap the ends of the hair onto the rod, and I've gotten down to where I see some shorter pieces that need to be controlled. I'm gonna grab another end paper and place it right behind that. So I'm gonna control those short ends with another end paper, and then continue wrapping. Once the time, um, if the time has not elapsed and everyone is still working, they have not called time and I'm the first one finished, let's say. I'm gonna make sure that I help myself out by cleaning as I go. So I'm no longer going to need this rat tail comb. I'm gonna place them into items to be disinfected as well as the perm rods themselves. And I'm gonna place the perm papers into the trash. Now 
Now do remember that if for some reason you drop a um, perm paper or you drop a perm rod onto the floor while you are wrapping during this procedure, you will need to stop exactly what you're doing at that moment. So if I have, um, let's say I'm about to put a perm rod into the head and I drop a perm paper, I need to stop, remove the rod, I need to place that rod um, either back down on the SMA or I need to put it into items to be disinfected, I need to uh, place my comb back down and I need to pick up that perm paper, put it in the trash, sanitize my hands, and continue with the service. So remember that everything that you do at State Board, it's not if you make a mistake, it's how you handle the mistake. So if I chose to leave that perm paper on the floor, or if I chose to leave that perm rod on the floor for more than a few seconds, I'm gonna be getting points taken off the longer that it's there. So always remember that we're trying to maintain client protection, safety, and infection control. So meaning that if I left that rod on the floor and I went to take a step and I slipped, I would hurt myself. Or if my client stood up and slipped, they would hurt themselves. So we need to make sure that we maintain a safe working space the entire time. Okay, so once I'm finished with the procedure, remember I said we do scalp analysis, we section the doll head, and then we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we wrap. Okay, after that, I'm gonna make sure that, like I said, these sections are controlled because we're going to be putting protective cream around the hairline. So if you had to move them out of the way for some reason. Okay. And then I'm going to sanitize and stand back and that will conclude the chemical weaving. Okay, so once we've finished the chemical weighting procedure, the proctor is going to come up to you individually and um, they're going to ask you to demonstrate saturation, okay? So you're gonna wait to be instructed. Once they come up, you're gonna sanitize your hands. I'm gonna go into my table setup. and remove the gloves. I'm also going to remove the um, foil that I had placed in there um, as I will need it to um, do the PD and strand test. So that's why I'm taking that out. You can wait until the PD and strand test. However, just um, if it happens to be that you're pulling out something and you pull that out at the same time, that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the bag of gloves and take out two. I'm gonna reseal the bag of gloves and place it onto the working area. I'm going to dispense my cotton. So you'll have a long cotton coil and you'll have a short or a short piece of cotton. So one is to uh, put around either the hairline or around the rods and I'll go over what that is. Um, and the other one is to catch the water that will fall from the simulated waving solution, okay? So once I've sanitized my hands, I'm going to put on my gloves. And then I'm going to dispense protective cream onto my hands. So I'm gonna take out a spatula. And remember, if you have a squeeze bottle, just make sure that that squeeze bottle does not touch um, your hand, okay? If it does, it'll need to be disinfected. I'm going to dispense over the trash, protective cream, reseal the protective cream, place my paper or my spatula into the trash, and all around the hairline, making sure I don't get any protective cream on the hair itself, I'm going to place protective cream. Please make sure you get the base of the neck. Okay, once that is finished, I'm gonna sanitize. And you can either place the long cotton coil around the hairline or you can do it around the rods, okay? Um, a benefit for doing it around the rods is that it will pick up any excess water so that it does not fall and drip onto the floor. So remember that if it does, you will need to stop what you're doing, grab a paper towel, wipe that up, put the paper towel in the trash, sanitize, and then continue with saturation, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my simulated waving bottle. 
take the cap off and place it into the working area. Grab my short piece of cotton. And remember that the tip of the simulated waving solution cannot touch the hair. The cotton can because it is a single use item that I'm going to be using on Susan. So it's only going to be touching her, but we do not let the tip of this bottle touch the hair. Okay, so I'm gonna follow. So it's gonna go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And you're going to saturate every single rod that you wrapped. If you did not finish the entire mohawk, that is okay, but don't pretend like you did. So don't continue to saturate if there's no rods there, okay? So making sure that I catch anything that falls, place that short piece of cotton in the trash, replace the cap, and by this time they're going to say, please demonstrate the test curl. You're gonna to go to the first rod that you wrapped, and hopefully you guys can see this. So go to the first rod wrap, unfasten. You're going to unwrap one and a half turns and hold it relaxed. So don't take it all the way out to here. Don't take it all the way out to the end, okay? Only unwrap one and a half turns and hold it relaxed. You're gonna count in your head, uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. And then you're gonna wrap it back down and fasten. Don't look to the proctor to tell you when to do this, okay? They are not in there to instruct you on how to do the procedure, they're there to watch you do the procedure, okay? And also, as I stated in the past, um, past procedures, the proctor will be giving you six feet, so social distancing. You will need to make sure that they're able to see that you're doing each um, service for the guests. So the saturation, the test curl, make sure that they're able to easily see that. Okay, so make sure that your back is not to them. Now from here, they're going to say, please remove one rod from the head. Okay, I'm gonna go to the last rod that I wrapped. And this will be very important because they're going to be further from you. I'm going to unfasten the perm rod and slightly as I'm unwrapping it, twist it so that the proctor can see. So I'm gonna do this in a slow motion because what they are looking for is fish hooks. So those little hooks at the ends of the hair. So if you do this too fast and they're not able to see the ends, you're gonna get points taken off. So make sure you do this in a slow motion and then show them the ends of the hair and remove it. You'll need to take the perm papers off of the rod, okay? So perm papers are a single use item, meaning they belong in the trash. So we need to make sure that we dispose of things properly. So end papers come off of the perm rod, place those in the trash, place this into items to be disinfected, and they will say, please do nothing until the next verbal instruction. So I'm going to sanitize and stand back. So once they have gone to each candidate, they are going to state to you, all candidates are ready to proceed. And what this means is they have instructed everyone individually and they are now going to move on to the next section. Okay, so once you guys are going to be moving on to the next section, it's actually going to be a five minute transition, okay? Um, and the instructions will go like this. You will remove all remaining rods from the head and create four quadrants or sections for the remaining chemical services. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have five minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have two minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. They're going to repeat this one more time and then you will begin. So I'm going to sanitize. And I'm gonna sanitize with my gloves on, okay? So you are able to keep the same pair of gloves on throughout the entire chemical services, unless I get a hole, um, they rip in some area whatsoever, they will need to be taken off and replaced. But other than that, they can stay on and you can use them for the entirety, okay? So I'm gonna remove the cotton. I'm gonna place the cotton in the trash. I'm gonna unfasten all of the perm rods. Okay, so once I've gotten a couple of them, I'm gonna pull two out at a time or three out at a time. You want to make sure that you remove the perm papers from the rods and place those into the trash. 
I suggest that you do this over the trash as it may be possible that perm papers will fall onto the floor. And remember that if that happens, you'll need to tend to it right away. Sanitize and then continue. You cannot leave the items to be disinfected box open while you are removing the rods. So each time that you open the box, it needs to be closed back down. So again, removing two to three rods at a time, making sure that I take off the firm papers from the rods. and placing the rods into items to be disinfected, making sure I close that box back. Now make sure that you guys are placing the things um, into the correct receptacles. So perm rods go into items to be disinfected. The perm papers go in the trash. Okay, so once that is finished, I'm going to remove one of the clips uh, from the hair. Now please remember that it is a state board violation to clip clips onto the towel. It's a state board violation to clip it onto the cape. You cannot clip clips onto other clips. Um, so you can place them on other parts of the hair. And the reason I say don't put it on another clip is because it might snap off and fly across the room. So um, you don't wanna have to chase down a small item like that. So just make sure we clip it onto another part of the hair. Don't wanna place it back on the SMA. So I'm gonna grab um, one of my combs and I'm going to just comb my uh, mohawk section straight down and start again from point A to point B and then pull that apart and add them to each side. Creating four quadrants for the rest of the chemical services. I'm going to place my foam into items to be disinfected if there's too much hair on it for me to pick off right now. And then I'm going to sanitize and stand back and that will conclude the five minute transition. All right, so now we're gonna move into the PD test and strand test, okay? So this is a 10 minute, trend, or a 10 minute procedure. So if you have not finished, the sectioning for the five minute uh, transition, then you can go ahead and make sure that you continue and make sure that your four sections are done during the PD and strand test. They give you tons of time during this section. It should really only take you about five minutes to perform. So if you did not finish during the five minute transition, you can finish first and then perform the predisposition and strand test, okay? So your instructions will read, you will complete a stimulated predisposition test and strand test. You will, you will demonstrate the predisposition test behind the ear. You will demonstrate the strand test on any area of the head. There is no required wait time for results. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. So they'll repeat it one more time and tell you you may begin. So let me just break down the instructions really quickly because a lot of people get confused about the strand test, okay? So we're gonna do the PD test behind the ear, okay? I'm right-handed, so I'm actually gonna start on the right side and it works better for me systematically. If you're left-handed, you may wanna start on the left side and work your way around the doll head, okay? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and perform the PD test behind the ear, but the strand test says on any area of the head. 
Okay. Um, I always recommend to do the strand test of the sideburn as you are going to later be doing a blow dry. So let's say I did a strand test right at that subsection line on the top. When I go to do my blow dry, I'm going to be pulling cholesterol or that simulated product through my subsection. So I want to stay as far away from that section as possible. So that's why I instruct you guys to do it in the sideburn. Okay. Also, it says there are no required wait time for results. And what they're meaning by that is that your strand test does not stay in the hair. So whether you apply it onto a foil or you apply it onto a piece of paper towel, it will not remain in the hair. So once you have cleaned up from uh, doing the strand test, you are going to remove it with a paper towel and spray water, okay? So this is uh, how this will go. So I'm gonna sanitize with my gloves on. Remember that if I don't have a hole or any tears in the gloves, they can be um, kept on through the entirety of the chemical services. So I'm gonna sanitize with my gloves on. I'm gonna go into my table setup box. Now your soap may or may not be in one of the setup bags or it may be in the universal supplies, okay? So you will need to cleanse behind the ear. I'm gonna grab my piece of cotton Dispense over the trash. Place the soap back on the working area. And I'm going to cleanse behind the ear for about 30 seconds. And the reason I want to do this is because the proctor has other candidates to look, to look at. So I wanna make sure that they see that I know I have to cleanse the area to be worked on. Place that piece of cotton in the trash. Okay. I'm going to sanitize my hands because I'm going to go um, into a Ziploc bag, which is considered a clean container. Okay, I'm going to grab a second piece of cotton. Now, please don't use a tint brush to apply the uh, PD test. Okay, um, you'll need to use a piece of cotton, um, something that's not abrasive to the skin. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the tint and I'm gonna do that over the trash. I'm gonna place the lid in the working area as well as the tint bowl. So remember that the tint bowl and the lid cannot be on the SMA. They don't come into direct contact with my guests, so there's no need for them to be on top of the SMA. I'm gonna grab my single use item, so my cotton, and I'm gonna grab a pea size of tint and place it where I just cleansed. Place that piece of cotton in the trash, okay? I'm gonna take a tint brush and place it into my tint bowl. Remove the clip from the front right section. Now remember, if you are left-handed, yours is going to be on the left side. And I'm going to take a quarter inch subsection right in the sideburn. Please don't take a one inch subsection, okay? So imagine that you put product on a one inch subsection, you're gonna have to wipe product off of that entire section. So make it as easy on yourself as possible. So I'm gonna take a quarter inch and I'm gonna clip up the rest of the hair. Now, I'm gonna check for any debris on my comb and then place it back on the SMA. Now remember, some kits may or may not have the foil in your kit for you. If not, that's okay. Um, then you can go ahead and use a paper towel to place the subsection on. Okay, since I have a foil ready to go here, I'm gonna place that all the way to the root. Hold that down with my thumb in place and you will need to saturate the entire strand, okay? So make sure you can actually see product on the hair. I'm gonna flip the ends of the hair up. Place my tint brush back into the tint bowl and I'm going to fold up my foil or my paper towel, whatever you guys have, okay? I'm going to leave that in for a few seconds while I clean up from the procedure. So I'm going to wipe off the tint brush. And place it into items to be disinfected. 
replace the tent to the tent bowl, or a tent, um, I'm sorry, the tent lid, replace that to the tent bowl. Grab a paper towel, remove the foil or paper towel from the hair, place that in the trash, and spray down the subsection. You will need to remove all residual products from the hair. As many paper towels and as many sprays as it takes, you will remove all of the product from the hair. Place the paper towel in the trash. A good way to tell if you've removed all the product is by placing it in between your index and middle finger and pulling down on the strand with tension and seeing if there's any leftover residual product. If there is, grab another paper towel, spray it down and wipe it off, okay? After that is finished, that concludes the PD and strand test. So I'm going to go ahead and sanitize my hands and stand back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to the chemical relaxer virgin application. You guys will have 15 minutes for this section and the instructions will go like this. You will perform a chemical hair relaxer virgin application. You will apply a stimulated relaxer product on one back quadrant or section of hair. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated and then they will tell you you may begin, okay? So you will be applying, it, applying simulated relaxer product to one entire back quadrant. So um, the entirety of one of these quadrants, okay? So you can use the left or the right. So remember if you're left-handed, you're probably going to be using the left back quadrant. If you're right-handed, we're gonna be using the right back quadrant. All right, so they say you may begin. I'm gonna sanitize with gloves on. I'm gonna open the simulated relaxer product over the trash. Place the lid on the working area and my relaxer products on the working area as well. Remember, it cannot be placed onto the SMA. Any residual product that may fall onto your working area must be cleaned up before you proceed with the procedure, okay? So I'm gonna sanitize my hands. I'm gonna place a tent brush into my relaxer. I'm going to grab a spatula, or if you have a squeeze bottle for your protective cream, you will dispense that over the trash. Place the spatula in the trash, replace the protective cream back onto the working area, and you will apply the, uh, the uh, protective cream, sorry. You'll apply the protective cream all around the hairline, making sure that you do not get any of that onto the subsections of hair. Any excess product you can wipe off onto a paper towel and place that in the trash. I'm going to take another paper towel and protect the front two quadrants from any product transfer. You can use the clips in the front to secure the paper towel so it does not fall off of the doll head, okay? So from there, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the clip from the hair, place it onto the SMA. Okay, and what I wanna do is comb out the entire quadrant with my wide tooth comb. So what I'm doing is controlling that hair so the cuticle is going all in one direction. I'm gonna place this wide tooth comb into items to be disinfected, sanitize my hands. Grab some product. I'm gonna take my first quarter inch subsection and I'm going to apply it to the mid shaft first. So your first application through the quadrant is going to be in the mid shaft. You're gonna apply it half an inch away from the scalp up to one inch away from the ends on both sides. When you do 
place the product onto the hair, make sure that the bristles of the brush do not penetrate the hair. So you'll need to turn it on its side, almost like you're doing a hand painting. So you're gonna lay that product on the top. You're gonna lay that product underneath. And what you're gonna start to do is crisscross your subsections, okay? So my first one is gonna go to the right. My second one will go to the left and so on. And the reason I say to do this is so that you keep your subsections organized for your second application of the product. So I'm gonna pick up more product, stay half an inch away from the base or from the scalp to one inch away from the ends applied on both sides and place that to the left. Take my next quarter inch subsection and I'm gonna be working down the entire quadrant half an inch away from the base, up to one inch away from the ends on both sides. Place that one to the right. Next quarter inch subsection. So we're working all of the mid shaft first, which is why we're starting at the top. So it's easier for us when we go to apply to the root. Take our next quarter inch subsection, apply half an inch away from the base, up to one inch away from the end. Making sure that our subsection lines are extremely straight. Remember no zigzag patterns. Make sure that you thoroughly saturate your subsection so you want to be able to see that there's product on top of that strand but not too much where it's going to fall onto the floor So remember that you'll need to do this quickly as you will only have 15 minutes for this section. So practice makes better, okay? So if you're not quick at applying product, you may want to practice doing this over and over and over again. Remember, repetition will only help you get better.
once we have approached the ends of the hair, we're gonna start the second application, okay? So I'm gonna take my subsection down and I'm going to apply to the root on both sides. Once I've done that, I'm gonna show manipulation. You can either do that with the spine of the comb, okay, so the spine is the back and not the teeth, okay, the spine, or you can do that with your fingers. So I choose to do it with my fingers. I'm gonna take my index and middle finger, just like this, place it onto the strand, and I'm gonna swipe down once, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the opposite hand, swipe down twice, okay? <clears throat> and I'm gonna continue that same pattern all the way back up. So this is also the reason why I subsectioned the way I did. So I crisscross my sections, that way I don't need to go back and subsection again, okay? So applying to the root on both sides, top and bottom. Manipulating the hair with my index and middle finger. I'm gonna swipe down one time, smoothing it through, and swipe down another time, smoothing it through. And I'm going to keep that same consistency and crisscross my sections. And that's just in case the proctor needs to come over and see the size of my subsections so that I don't lose points during this section. So top and bottom and smooth through with your index and middle finger or the spine of the comb. some reason that my tint brush fell onto the floor. What you'll need to do is stop what you're doing, pick that up, wipe up off, off any product off the floor, and then place it into items to be disinfected, your paper towel in the trash, sanitize, grab another tint brush, and then continue with the service. Once I'm finished, I'm going to wipe off any excess product from my gloves. If you need to, you can replace the gloves at this time if there's too much product to mess with. So I'm gonna place that paper towel in the trash, remove the paper towel from the front two quadrants, place that in the trash as well. Remove any residual product that may have gotten on the front two quadrants. I'm going to wipe off any tint, or I'm sorry, any residual relaxer product from the tint brush. Place that paper towel in the trash. Put your tint brush into items to be disinfected. Replace the relaxer lid to the relaxer uh, solution. And I no longer need this, so I'm gonna place that into items to be disinfected as well. I'm gonna clean off any residual product, sanitize and stand back, and that will conclude the Virgin Relaxer. All right, 
Okay, everybody, so we're coming to the end of the chemical procedure. So we're gonna go ahead and do the hair color retouch application, and you do have 15 minutes for this procedure. Your instructions will go like this. You will perform a hair color retouch application. You will apply a simulated product to the other back quadrant or section of hair. The client has one inch of regrowth. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 15 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have eight minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. You will repeat it one more time, as stated in the previous procedures, and then they will tell you you may begin. Now, if we don't know what one inch of regrowth is, remember I stated in the previous procedures that there are markings on our combs to show us what one inch looks like. Also for most of us, if we take our knuckles and measure the distance between our first and second, it's normally about an inch, okay? So if you guys don't know what an inch looks like, that would be an inch, okay? So we're gonna sanitize our hands with gloves on. I'm going to go ahead and twist the other quadrant away where I did the relaxer and clip it, okay? I'm gonna wipe off any residual product that may have gotten onto my gloves. I'm gonna open up my bag that has the spatulas inside. Remember, if you do have a squeeze bottle, don't touch the tip of the bottle, okay? I'm gonna dispense protective cream onto my hand, place the spatula in the trash, protective cream back on the working area, and this will be the last time I apply protective cream around the hairline, making sure I don't get anything on these sections of hair. If I do, just like this, I'm gonna grab a paper towel and just wipe off that product, okay? And then place the paper towel in the trash. All right, so wipe off any residual protective cream from the gloves. I'm gonna push my trash down. Remember, you're able to push the trash down. Just make sure you sanitize afterwards. So I'm gonna open the tent bowl over the trash. And I'm gonna place the lid and the bowl on the working area. I'm gonna take a tent brush and place it inside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take another paper towel and to protect the front two quadrants, I'm gonna place that on the front two and control it with the clips, okay? I'm gonna remove the clip from the subsection, place my clip onto my SMA, and I will apply product to each quarter inch subsection on both sides, one inch out. Starting at the top, So that is about one inch out. So about to here from the root. And I'm also going to crisscross my subsections just like I did for the relaxer. So my first one goes to the right, my second one to the left, and I'm gonna work each quarter inch subsection the same way making sure I apply one inch out from the base or from the scalp and crisscross my subsection. You will be doing the entire subsection or the entire section. following what the instructions tell you to do. So if it says to apply one inch out, making sure we apply it one inch out. Okay, so sometimes what I see in mock board is people are applying to like two to three inches out from the head. You will get points docked if the proctor notices that. Your subsection sizes should be no larger than a half an inch, okay? 
So no larger than a half an inch. The product needs to look or simulate the ability to be seen on the opposite side, okay? If you are working with an actual color, your subsection sizes should be in coordinates with how dense the hair is. If the ability for the color does not penetrate each subsection, it's too wide. making sure that my subsection lines are consistent. Remember that the way that we make them consistent is by starting at point A to point B without lifting the tint brush or the comb whatever you choose to part with. Can you part with a comb? Yes. It saved me time to part with the tip brush. tilt her down just a slight bit more. And the reason being is because I've noticed that my subsections keep drooping a little bit back towards me. So if I tilt her forward, it's gonna help those lay over so that they don't continue to fall while I'm working. So once I have finished, I'm going to take down the entire back quadrant, remove the paper towel from the front two quadrants, wipe off the tint from the tint brush, place it into items to be disinfected, replace the tint to the tint bowl, sanitize and stand back, and that will conclude the hair color retouch procedure. Okay, you guys, so we're going to be doing the two minute setup for your blow dry procedure. So we have just finished our chemicals. So I'm going to remove my gloves, okay? Um, you do not need these on for the blow dry. I know a lot of people do forget during mock board. You won't lose points if you do leave them on, but your hands probably need a break. Okay, so I'm gonna place those into the trash. <clears throat> And our two minute setup, the instructions will read, you will have two minutes to set up the supplies for the blow dry styling section of this examination. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished, the instructions will be repeated. So you only have two minutes for this setup. It goes extremely fast. And just remember that this is the same client from chemicals, so there's no need to disinfect your entire work area. So that will help you guys move it along a little bit faster, okay? So I'm gonna sanitize with gloves on, or not with gloves on. I'm gonna sanitize my hands. Um, any items that I do not need, I'm gonna place into items to be disinfected, okay? <clears throat> Like I don't need the protective cream. I won't need my simulated weighting solution. I won't need the soap anymore, okay? I'm gonna sanitize because I'm gonna go into my duffel bag. And I still have the same SMA out. There's no product on it. It is still clean and it is still the same guest. So I'm gonna take out my vent brush. I have 
a ratel comb, some all-purpose combs. I have more clips. I'm gonna place the set up bag in the trash, sanitize again, because I'm gonna go back in and grab my blow dryer. Once the blow dryer is removed, I'm gonna make sure to close my duffel bag as it is a clean container. So do not leave it open. I have the cord controlled on my blow dryer. I'm gonna unwrap that and plug it in and turn it on just to make sure that it works. Now I'm using an extension cord, but do remember that at State Board, your guys' outlet will be right here on the station. Okay, if it's not working for some reason, raise your hand, let the proctor know so that they can fix that for you or grab you an extension cord so you're able to perform the procedure. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on. It works just fine. Now I can organize my SMA, sanitize and stand back. And that will conclude the two minute setup. All right, you guys, so we're gonna be doing the blow dry styling procedure. This will be 10 minutes, so your instructions will read. You'll perform blow dry styling. You'll prepare your client for the service. The hair must be wet. You, uh, will, be, you will blow dry one front quadrant or section using a brush. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to use a bent brush, which I showed you guys during the two minute setup. Um, you guys are able to use a round brush if you want to take that instead. Um, and I'll go over the ways that you need to uh, go about standing and how to utilize that tool, okay? <clears throat> Uh, you will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. <clears throat> Step back to indicate that you are finished. The instructions will be repeated. They'll repeat it one more time like I've previously stated, and then they'll tell you may begin. Now, when it comes to some of these uh, parameters, the hair must be wet. You cannot only just spray this twice and call it good to go, okay? You need to make sure the hair is damp, but don't make it so wet that it's dripping with water, okay? You wanna make sure that you're able to actually complete the procedure. So the uh, hair must be damp, but it doesn't need to be dripping wet. All right, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands. Remove the clip from the front quadrant. Now remember, using the towel as a hammock, okay? And one of my all-purpose combs, I'm gonna spray down my subsection and work that water through the hair. So this will help me, as I work the water through the hair, it will help ensure that I do not spray it down too much to where the hair is soaking wet. Remember periodically to check the floor to make sure that there's no water drops on the floor. If it has, then you'll stop what you're doing, place your implements back down, grab a paper towel from your working area, wipe off any water from the floor, place the paper towel in the trash, sanitize, and then you can continue with the service, okay? Water bottle's gonna go back into the working area. And from here, I'm gonna use my vent brush. Now, your vent brush, um, the way that you utilize this tool is by leafing and beveling. Okay, so leafing is when we go into the hair and gain control by rocking it in. Okay, so I'm gonna put that straight into the hair and then rock it back towards me. Now, beveling is where I pull it out and then I start to turn the ends under, which would create that curl effect inward. Okay, so that would be beveling. Now, I do need to stand either in front or behind when I'm using a leafing and beveling technique. If you choose to take a round brush with you, that's fine, you can do that. Just remember that you will need to stand in front of your subsection, okay? So you're gonna be standing in front of your subsection instead of in front or behind it, okay? So know that that's how you're gonna distinguish between the two tools. So round brush in front of your section, bent brush 
or a Denman brush in front of your client or behind your client. Now, during the actual demo, I'm not going to be talking as the blow dryer will be on. You probably won't be able to hear me. Um, so anything that um, comes up, I will just clarify later. spots and if you feel any cool spots that means that the hair is still damp okay if it feels warm that means the hair is dry so you'll not need to do anything further okay now you'll notice as I was moving through the hair the nozzle cannot touch the brush or the hair okay so it follows the brush and the hair but it cannot touch each other um, another thing is a lot of us are used to holding the nozzle when we're blow drying um, this is not part of state board, you can't do it that way. You actually need to hold it by the handle at state board, okay? After you get your license, do as you please. I know I always hold it by the handle, but just make, or I mean by the nozzle. So just make sure at state board, you're holding it by the handle and you're not letting the concentrator touch the brush itself or the hair. Um, you will need to take your own blow dryer with you guys to state board. Make sure there's no markings on it, um, that there's a concentrator, uh, make sure that your cord is controlled, that your name's not written on it, everything like that, okay? Um, you'll also notice that I subsectioned the hair as I went down, and that's just to make sure that I got everything completely dry, okay? Um, it can, the subsections can move towards the face, but you don't want the hair blowing out of control in Susan's face. So they're going to be looking for how controlled you are as you're blow drying the sections, okay? Um, are, do they have control when they're doing a leafing and beveling? Or do they have control when they're doing their round brush, okay? The cuticle does need to be smooth, so that's why you're going to notice I was working down with the cuticle, okay? So not against the cuticle. Uh, if you do work against it, that's when you're going to get that frizzy going on, 
okay? Um, once we are finished, I'm going to place my brush into items to be disinfected. It's gonna have a ton of hair on it, so I don't wanna sit there and have to clean that off, okay? I'm also going to unplug my blow dryer. Now, at this point, you may or may not have extra room in your items to be disinfected box, okay? So you can either, the station is very wide, so it goes back pretty far. You can place it behind your SMA, or you can place it off into the manicure table. Don't place anything back into the kit. Once it's brought out, you cannot put it back inside, okay? Um, it is considered a clean storage, so once something is brought out, it's not considered uh, clean enough to put it back inside. So I'm gonna place this over here on the manicure table. I'm gonna sanitize my hands and I'm gonna stand back and that will conclude the blow dry styling section of the exam. So this will be our last procedure. So excited you guys made it, yay. Um, We're now gonna go into the two minute setup for your thermal styling uh, procedure, okay? So your instructions will read. You will have two minutes to set up the supplies for the thermal curling section of this examination. Do not demonstrate any procedures until the verbal instructions are given and you are instructed to begin. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. And then they'll tell you you may begin. Um, remember, this is still the same client from Chemical Services. There's no need to disinfect the entire work area unless for some reason there's hair or debris or any product transfer that was left onto um, the station itself. If not, you're good to go, okay? So, I'm going to sanitize. I'm gonna place all items that I don't need into the receptacle, um, items to be disinfected. So my combs, I don't need. Clips, I may need, so I'm actually gonna leave those out. Sanitize again, and I'm gonna go back into my kit. And I'm gonna grab my thermal curling setup bag. This will have inside a all-purpose comb, a rat tail comb, and it will have a light paper or a Sanex strip. This is to test the iron wick, okay? <clears throat> Sanitize again, because I'm gonna go back into my kit after I push the trash down. And I'm going to remove uh, my thermal iron. Um, I do have two examples here, which I wanna show you guys, okay? So you will have to take your thermal curling iron with you. Please make sure it is in working condition. There's no scrapes, no scratches, um, that it works properly. It's not broken in any type of way, okay? So we have our standard um, spring iron, okay? Which is what you guys get in your kit, I believe. So you are able to take a spring iron or you are able to take a Marcel iron, which is manual. Okay, so it does not have a spring like this one does. You have to actually manually move the handle, okay? And that will move the shell. I'm gonna be using a Marcel today. Um, if you guys have questions on how to use this, um, you guys are able to email me at any time and I will go over in detail of how to use it. Hopefully I answer or satisfy any questions that you guys have today, okay? So I'm not gonna be using the spring iron. Once you are finished working out of your duffel bag, make sure it is zipped closed. I'm going to unravel the cord. Remember, it should, should be controlled. And make sure that the barrel of the iron is on top of a towel. Reason being, you don't want it to burn the station in any type of way that'll cause too much attention to you. Make sure that it's on top of a towel so that you're not burning the station, okay? Again, I'm going to plug in the thermal curling iron because I touched the outlet. I need to go ahead and sanitize my hands. Again, a reminder, your outlet will be up here so you don't have to do any bending or crawling underneath the station. I'm gonna make sure that my iron is unlocked and turned on. 
Uh, the heat that you will need is about 350. Um, if it does have a temperature control, if not, and it's a number system, anywhere between 16 and 18 is perfect. So medium temperature, um, you do not want to have it too hot, okay? It will burn and sizzle the hair, which will again cause attention to you. You don't want that, okay? So once you have turned on and uh, or plugged in and turned on your thermal curling iron, you're going to sanitize, stand back, and wait for further instruction. And that will conclude the two minute setup for thermal curling. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and move into the thermal curling procedure. You will have 10 minutes and your instructions will be read like this. You will perform thermal curling. You will prepare your client for the service. You will form two curls on the top of the head and two curls on one side of the head in a front quadrant. A complete curl must be formed from base to end. You will be expected to follow all client protection, safety, and infection control procedures. You will have 10 minutes to complete this section. You will be informed when you have five minutes remaining. Step back to indicate that you have finished. The instructions will be repeated. So let's break down these instructions really quickly, okay? So <clears throat> it's saying you will prepare your client for the service. So I know previously I said that would mean draping, but we're still working on the same guest. So when they're saying prepare your client for the service, we're gonna be subsectioning out so that we can form two curls on top of the head and two curls on one side of the head. Now it says you must form two curls on the top, two curls on the side, correct? In a front quadrant. It doesn't state which front quadrant. So that's another reason why I have you guys do the PD test in the sideburn area. So just in case you don't get the blow dry section done, you guys are able to perform the thermal curling still, but on the opposite quadrant, because it doesn't see which quadrant you have to do it in, okay? Um, your complete curl must be formed from base to end. So a lot of us are used to bringing that thermal curling iron all the way to the ends and then wrapping it down, but it's actually going against what the instructions say. So you need to get comfortable creating a base, which is close to the scalp, and then clicking those ends in, which I'm gonna show you today, okay? All right, so I'm gonna sanitize my hands. I'm going to open the shell and the barrel and place my light paper inside and I'm gonna hold it down for three seconds. So again, just like we counted in our head before, make sure you don't count out loud. It is one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, open. There is no need to retest, okay? So we're gonna check to make sure there's no brown or yellow marks on our light paper. If there is, we need to turn the temperature down, okay? But do not retest. So I'm gonna place this in the trash. Now I'm gonna subsection for the thermal curling procedure. Now, notice that if we look at Susan's head here, we have a flat surface about two inches up from the crown area where we sectioned, okay? And then it starts to round down. Now, I'm gonna subsection out the roundness of her head so I don't have to form a curl on that section. I want as flat of a space as possible when I'm forming my curls so that it sits up correctly. Um, it does not state that I have to make my curl about four inches wide. So you don't need to do the curl from the crown all the way to the front hairline. That's not needed. So I'm gonna take out the first two inches from the front hairline. So remember, we're gonna start at point A and go to point B without lifting off of our comb from the head. And I'm gonna subsection that away with a clip. All right. Hopefully you guys can see um, what I'm doing here. So my subsection size is going to be the diameter of the thermal curling iron. Remember how we said it's going to be the diameter of the perm rod when we're wrapping the, uh, during the chemical weaving. Same thing during the thermal curling procedure. So it needs to be the subsection size of the diameter of our iron. Um, this is about a three quarter inch iron. So my subsection size should reflect a three quarter inch. I'm gonna start at the top 
at the center part line, subsectioning out three quarters of an inch. Now, just like I used during the perm procedure, I'm going to utilize a 45 degrees away from me or an on base uh, placement. Now, the reason being is my curl is going to actually sit up a lot better if I use that 45 degrees away from me. So I'm gonna comb from the base away from me, 45 degrees, and I'm gonna be turning the doll head in different directions so that you guys can see. But what I need to do is warm up the base a little bit. Please do not touch the scalp with the iron, okay? If you do, you will be um, docked points. So make sure that we're heating up the base. I'm going to use my middle finger, if you guys are using a Marcel, to extend that handle upward so that the shell is open. When I place that inside the hair, the shell needs to be away from me and the barrel needs to be towards me, okay? So I'm gonna place that inside and notice I'm at the base and I'm going to control those ends and start clicking them in. Once you place the iron in the hair, you cannot stop moving it, otherwise you will get lines of demarcation. If the line, or I'm sorry, if the ends of the hair get too short for you to control, use the teeth of the comb to feed in the rest of those ends. Once I get down close to the base, I'm actually going to release a little bit of tension, just like we did when we did our test curl. And I'm going to comb that hair on the barrel and then hold it down with tension for about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to release tension and click out. Now you can see why I kept the teeth on the hair, okay? So the reason I combed the hair onto the barrel is so that that subsection remains in the teeth of the comb. So when I pull out, barrel, it doesn't disrupt my barrel curl. So I'm gonna let that cool for about 10 seconds and use the iron to bump it off. So I actually noticed that it was smoking a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna turn down the temperature of my iron. And I'm gonna turn uh, the doll head this way to see if you guys get a better angle. Now, it says two curls on top of the head and two curls on one side of the head. It never states that I have to place them vertically and then horizontal or vice versa. So what I like to do is place all four horizontal on the head. Because we're working from the center part line, you're naturally going to have two that are placed above the parietal ridge and two that are placed below the parietal ridge, which satisfies the directions. So taking another three quarter inch subsection, I'm gonna comb 45 degrees away from me, creating that 45 degree on base placement. I'm going to heat up the base, open the shell in the barrel. Starting at the base, I'm gonna control that hair as close to the base as possible because the directions say from base to ends. Please make sure that your iron does not touch the scalp at any time. If it does, that is not client protection or safety, so they will dock a lot of points for that. I'm gonna release tension and comb the hair on the barrel, then hold it down with tension for about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to rock my wrist forward and start to click out. I'm gonna let the barrel curl cool for about 10 seconds. And then I'll use the barrel of my iron to bump that off. So I don't know if you guys can see through my subsections at all, but they're more than likely going to be coming around looking for fish hooks. So what you're gonna want to see is that complete tunnel all the way through your barrel curl. Okay, and that's gonna show them that you have a complete curl from base to ends. You don't have any fish hooks, okay? Now I'm gonna turn her back this way, see if you guys can see me better, and continue the last two curls. So another quarter, I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch subsection. 45 degrees away from me. I'm gonna heat up 
the base. Place the iron as close to the base as possible without putting it on the scalp. Clicking those ends in, making sure that I am constantly moving the iron so I don't get any lines of demarcation. Using the teeth of the comb to control those short ends. Now, piece of advice, if you burn yourself at state board, please try not to make a face, okay? So I'm gonna release a little bit of tension, comb the hair on the barrel, hold it down for 10 seconds. Release tension, click the iron out. Let it cool for 10 seconds. Now, if I don't let this cool, what's gonna happen is the bonds that were broken while it was hot are gonna keep drooping until it cools down. So I wanna make sure that that hair cools and the bonds resurface or reharden so that it stays in place. If it's still hot for some reason, that's when you're gonna to start to see the drooping of your subsection. Now I'm gonna place the last curl, my last three quarter inch subsection, 45 degrees away from me. I'm gonna heat up the base, make sure I control starting at the base, working my way through the ends, making sure that I don't stop moving the iron through the hair because I don't want any lines of demarcation. And remember when the iron is placed into the hair, we need to make sure that that shell is away from us and the barrel of the iron is towards us. Hold it down for about 10 seconds, release tension, put the iron out, let it cool, and then bump that off. You're allowed to fix them slightly, okay? Um, what you don't want to do is have a whole like uh, spiral curl going on and then you having to wrap it back up. That's not going to get you points for appearance. So make sure that you're only fixing them slightly and you're not having to do a bunch of uh, fixing on your subsections, okay? I'm gonna release the hair from the front, place that back onto the SMA making sure I turn off my iron as this is the last procedure. So if I don't turn my iron off right now, it's not gonna cool down enough. Um, but either way, you're gonna be wrapping it in a towel uh, before you place anything back into your bag, okay? So I'm going to remove and control the cord from the outlet. Leave that on the SMA, sanitize and stand back and wait for further instructions and that will conclude the thermal curling procedure. All right, you guys, so um, this is concluding the entirety of your test. However, um, I wanna go over a few um, instructions that will happen right after your exam, because a lot of people get confused, especially during mock board, what do I do once the last procedure ends, right? So what's gonna happen is your proctor is going to state the following summary. So this is your candidate's uh, cleanup and final summary of the exam. All examiners have indicated they have completed their assessment. Make sure that all kit supplies and disposable materials are taken with you. This concludes the National Interstate Council of State Boards of Cosmetology National Barbering Practical Examination. Thank you for your participation. So a lot of times this is when I get everybody staring back at me because I do um, mock board at Riverside. So I get all my students staring back at me like confused, what do I do? Okay, so at this point, don't stand there and do nothing. This is when you're cleaning up and you're gonna do this quickly from the entire procedures. Everything at this point can now go back into your kit, okay? So it doesn't matter which bag it goes into as long as it's all cleaned up and put back into the duffel bag, okay? And then once you're finished putting everything back into the duffel bag, that's when you're going to go and grab the broom and sweep your uh, area and then stand back and wait for them to instruct you to leave, okay? Um, 
So please make sure that you wait for them to instruct you. At that time, you guys will be socially distanced, okay, when you're instructed to leave the exam room. So they'll release somebody, then somebody else, and then so on. So just make sure that all of your items go back into your duffel bag, you clean up whatever hair is left on your station, and then um, that's when you guys will be able to leave the exam room, okay? Um, from here, I'm just going to go over some pieces of advice for you. Okay, now dress code. Do you guys wanna go in black? Okay, you wanna make sure that uh, your pants cover your shoes. You wanna make sure that you wear comfortable shoes. Um, don't wear anything neon, something that's gonna stand out. Okay, you wanna be as incognito as possible, okay? Um, make sure that whatever shirt you wear, uh, that when you bend over, it doesn't expose any skin. Uh, make sure that you don't wear any long sleeves because you'll constantly be pushing the long sleeves up and you'll have to remember, hey, I need to sanitize after I touch my clothing, okay? Um, don't wear any jewelry that dangles. Simple jewelry, like maybe a necklace that you wear constantly is okay, but no like bangles or anything on your wrist. You cannot wear a watch. They are um, not allowed in the exam rooms, not even the simplest watch. Uh, so please don't take a watch with you. Your cell phone cannot go with you. Uh, please don't bring it into the exam site at all. Uh, they used to have a lock box where you guys can all um, keep your items um, communally. Uh, meaning that there's other people's cell phones in there as well. But with COVID, I doubt that they're letting that be available to you. So please leave it in your glove box or leave it with whoever took you to state board, okay? Um, <clears throat> another thing, your hair. Uh, women or men with long hair, make sure you guys control it up into a ponytail, into a bun. Um, if you guys have bangs, wear a headband so that everything is out of your face. Um, if you wear glasses, a good way to keep them secure so you don't have to keep pushing them up is actually wear one of those tight fabric headbands around your head and over the handles of your glasses so that it keeps them in place. That way you don't constantly be pushing them up and having to sanitize your hands. Um, I hope that this helps. I know that there's so many pieces of advice that I can give you guys, but um, I hope that you found this very informative. And if you have any questions whatsoever or need clarification on anything that we've gone over during the procedures, please email me at brittanyh at salonsuccessacademy.com. That's B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y h at salonsuccessacademy.com. Thank you guys so much. Um, I hope that I get to meet any of you in the future. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out.